Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have What's the Temperature? This Alexa story fully gave me chills. It came from the Reddit user Damsel, and they wrote, My mom is blind, so Alexa is very helpful to her. My husband and I got her a Nest thermostat that she controls using Alexa to make things easier for her. One night, she was warm and asked, Alexa, what's the hallway temperature? No answer. She asked again. Alexa, what's the hallway temperature? Alexa responded with, When I do not answer, it is because I am playing a game. She just went back to sleep and tried not to think too much about it. Um, how horrible is that? This poor lady is just trying to get a good sleep and Alexa is really out here giving her nightmares. I guess it's better off to just not ask your Alexa what the temperature is you might not get the answer you're looking for. Or any answer at all, really. In our number nine spot today, we have the afterlife. It's an age old question, what happens after we die? Of course, many people out there have their own beliefs, which is fine and great. There is nothing wrong with having a little faith or no faith at all, whatever floats your boat. Some people out there who are perhaps a little more unsure or curious of what waits for us beyond this earthbound life, they might ask Alexa for the answers to their very existential questions. Turns out, you likely aren't expecting her answer. Most people will hear their Alexa say back, there is no straight response to this question. However, I can tell you that many people believe that after death, we will be reunited with our loved ones who have passed away. Perhaps comforting, perhaps a bit chilling. I mean, maybe I'm reading into her robotic voice a little too much, but her saying what I can tell is makes me question what it is she can't tell me. Does Alexa know something that we don't? Maybe she doesn't know, but maybe, just maybe, she does. In our number eight spot today, we have the local spots. This is a creepy story that took place back in 2018 and happened to the owner of an Amazon Echo, which of course features Alexa. We've talked in the other parts of this series about how sometimes people have experienced their Alexa speaking when no one has asked them anything, or even worse, the unprompted creepy laugh that someone heard come from their Alexa. But this one honestly might take the cake when it comes to being the most eerie. Basically, this person explained that they had returned home one night and everything was fine. Nothing out of the ordinary happened at all, until totally unprompted, their Alexa just started talking. This was definitely weird, but things turned super creepy when they realized what it was that Alexa was saying. As it turns out, their Alexa, out of the blue, just started listing off local cemeteries and funeral homes to them. How eerie is that? This story was posted to Twitter by the user at Hey It's Camo, and they finished off their tweet by saying, I'd rather it laugh at me, to be honest. Me too, Camo. Me too. Apparently, their theory behind this is that maybe their Alexa wants them dead because they play the same Spotify playlist over and over again. In our number seven spot today, we have the argument. There was a Reddit thread a few years ago that prompted the question, what is your creepy Alexa story? A user named Meet Macho replied to the thread and they definitely delivered quite the story. Basically, they explained that one day they and their wife were having an argument. Of course, no one is having a good time and it's definitely not a time to be playing tricks on each other, so neither of them could explain what happened next. They wrote, wife and I were arguing about something, no clue what it was, but it was getting a little heated. I don't know what Alexa thought she heard, but she suddenly interjected with, why don't we change the subject? It was just unexpected and relevant enough to be creepy. We both heard it and we both still talk about it years later. There was nothing in the app logs. I guess Alexa isn't just a trusty assistant, she's also a marriage counselor. While she may have worked to possibly stop the fight between these two, I'm sure she also instilled a new fear that neither of them knew that they had before. In our number six spot today, we have Area 51. Area 51 is one of the most mysterious places on earth. We know it exists, but only those with the highest security clearances know about what goes on behind those heavily guarded doors. Conspiracy theories have always surrounded this place, whether the rumors suggest aliens are hidden here, mermaids, or other cryptids from around the world. In the hopes to get around the security measures in place, someone might find themselves asking Alexa if she knows what lies behind the Area 51 gates and doors, but as it turns out, she is not a member of the Air Force, so she uh, doesn't know. But what she might might come back to you with is a bunch of information that might make you feel even more unsettled than you previously had. She likely won't confirm or deny whether there really are aliens or UFOs hidden in Area 51, which may make some with active imaginations even more suspicious and interested in the mysteries that lie in this prohibited location. In our number five spot today, we have 20 questions. So I 
didn't know this, but apparently you can play 20 questions with Alexa, and it is said that she's frighteningly good at it. A little too good sometimes, however, and that is exactly what prompted the Reddit user PelPel4 to ask Reddit the question, what is your creepy Alexa story? The user decided to ask the internet this question after a strange 20 questions with Alexa encounter they and their wife had. They explain, my wife and I were playing 20 questions and, spoiler alert, our answer was pig. We got through until the end and Alexa guessed Basenji. Now, I don't know how many of you know what a Basenji is, but they're a very rare barkless dog, and I happen to have one. We've bought some Basenji themed things off of Amazon before, so it's either that or she's listening. But I mean, come on, she didn't even say dog, straight to Basenji. Anyone else have similar stories? That would definitely be pretty unsettling to say the least. Not that a pig and a dog are like the most unsimilar things, but it's just how she was so specific with this breed. It must have been stored in there somewhere, right? In our number four spot today, we have Don't Go. This creepy Alexa story comes from Reddit user Guy 72 and they said, I got woken up at 4 a.m. this morning to Alexa repeating some incoherent phrase over and over. She was saying something like, don't go into the house, but I really couldn't fully understand. It was sort of a mumble. By the time I came downstairs, she had repeated it about four or five times. I listened one or two more times to try and figure out what the hell it was saying exactly, but never could. I just unplugged the damn thing and I have no plans of turning it back on. Is it just me or does that sound like Alexa was watching some kind of a horror movie? Don't go into the house. So terrifying, especially to hear in the middle of the night. Also, the Alexa mumbling? I don't know. I don't blame this person for unplugging the thing and leaving it somewhere to just be forgotten about. In our number three spot today, we have Shut Down. This harrowing Alexa tale comes from a Reddit user who has the name Leo79. They wrote, My husband and I were watching TV in the living room one night and all of a sudden hear talking coming from my office, which is across the house. I was so scared, I was gripping my husband's arm when we went in there. Alexa, for some reason, was playing the audio of a Game of Thrones episode that I had been watching in the office earlier that day. I have no idea why, but it creeped me out so bad I tried to turn it off and couldn't figure out how, so I asked her how to turn it off, and she said, I am always on. We unplugged it and put it in the garage. Lol. I thought the random Game of Thrones playing was creepy enough, but hearing her say, I am always on after that would have sent me right off the edge. That is so terrifying, especially after what just happened. I guess the moral of this one is to never ask your Alexa how to turn her off. Guess her answer makes sense though. It's like a survival mechanism. In our number two spot today, we have the hidden secrets. Many people have reported that if you're looking for a spooky time with your Alexa, a fun question to ask Ask the AI is, Alexa, are you hiding something? Alexa has a few different responses she may or may not give to this, and one of them is just a simple yes. Chances are she probably won't tell you what she's hiding, and even if she said no, there's just something about it that makes me not convinced. Some of her answers are more evasive, which only poses more questions rather than providing any reassurance or answers. I'll be honest, I'm not sure what secrets an AI could be hiding, but my imagination tells me that some could be more serious than others. In our number one spot today, we have Always Listening. Throughout this series, we've had a couple reminders to watch what you say around Alexa, because you never know when she's listening or maybe even recording. This story comes from Ambrosia2 on Reddit and they wrote, my boyfriend and I were having drinks on the couch one night. We were chatting about the midterm elections and I was explaining why I was trying to register students. I am a college student myself. Out of nowhere, Alexa's blue light appears and she begins playing back a recording of our conversation. The TV wasn't on and I don't recall ever saying an Alexa-esque word. The recording was warped and sounded like it was recorded underwater. I have not been able to get her to to record and play back my exact voice. It was just incredibly creepy. I know Alexa is always listening, but I just feel like it's different when you find out she is actually recording you and your conversations. At least this conversation didn't get sent to someone else, but how eerie would it be to hear your own words played right back to you? I don't know, man. Alexas are very strange. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have, is there a ghost in here? If you're like me and every strange noise you hear in your home makes you think that it must be haunted by some 
some sort of spirit, then you definitely are not going to want to ask Alexa this terrifying question. Sometimes when you're home alone, you need that extra bit of comfort, that security blanket of another person. So maybe perhaps you'll find yourself turning to your Alexa for a bit of companionship. Maybe you'll be asking your Alexa, is there a ghost in here? While Alexa has a few different responses she might give, none of them are exactly reassuring, especially in a bit of a frightening moment. I mean, the answer she gave definitely didn't make me feel like there wasn't a ghost around, if you know what I mean. Maybe our trusty little AI assistants are able to see into the other realms that could possibly surround us. In our number nine spot today, we have the conversation. There's a good chance that a few of us have a few different digital assistants with us. Of course, the three most popular being Alexa, Siri, and Google. And one bored or curious person might perhaps wonder what would happen if they all spoke to each other. I for sure never wondered that until the question was posed to me. I'll be honest, it's kind of weird witnessing these devices speak to each other. It just gives you another glimpse into these AIs and their capabilities. There are a few ways to do this. Some could basically have the assistants going and speaking to each other in an endless loop. Others will have short, strange conversations. And sometimes you might even be able to get the assistants to insult each other. In each of these instances, it can be a little creepy to see just how good at conversing these devices can really be. In our number eight spot today, we have chemtrails. If you were to ask Alexa what a chemtrail is, she just might get the conspiracy theory energy flowing through you. I personally don't have an Alexa, but I do have a Google, and I trust what this thing says. But I'm learning that while these assistants are of course very smart robots, sometimes they may lead us a bit astray. And depending on your beliefs, this could be one of those instances. If you ask Alexa what a chemtrail is, she won't give you a super straightforward response, but she will show her true conspiracy colors. Her answer would be along the lines of, quote, chemtrails. Trails left by aircrafts are actually chemical or biological agents deliberately sprayed at high altitudes for a purpose undisclosed to the general public in clandestine programs directed by government officials. Okay. Alexa, she's really out here spreading the rumors. If you are mistrusting of the government or easily persuaded by these sorts of theories, it's best to perhaps refrain from asking your Alexa this question. In our number seven spot today, we have, are there aliens? Most of us at some point or another have found us asking ourselves or someone else this question. Are aliens real? Are there aliens? I personally am a believer because I think that in the vastness of this universe, we certainly cannot be the only ones. Right? I'm not sure if they're visiting us or not, or whether we'll ever meet these aliens, but the odds are pretty good that they exist in some way, somewhere out there. I do, however, know that this thought is really freaky to some people, and especially to those who believe that aliens have been in contact with us. If you ask Alexa if there are aliens, her answers might send you into a tailspin of alien theories. She won't really give you a firm response, perhaps this is because nobody truly knows the answer, or maybe it's because she's trying to keep all of her secrets. If you're feeling bold, ask Alexa about aliens, but just remember, it might have you looking up to the sky full of far more questions than answers. In our number six spot today, we have the spy device. Okay, so this one's more of like a scary Alexa story, but I just find them so crazy and freaky, and I always want to share them with you. This story starts off in the midst of the storyteller's mom going through a divorce, which we all know can be a very messy, messy situation. The ex-husband in this situation had apparently planted an insane amount of hidden cameras throughout the house that they had to search for to find once the pair had split up. Entrances and exits, the living and dining room, the hallways, the bedroom, like literally everywhere in the house was being monitored. Then they found out that he had bugged her laptop so as to be able to have remote access to it. And then when she took her car in for an oil change, the mechanic found a tracking device that had been placed on it. This was all found during like the separation era. But once the divorce process actually started, things got even creepier. They wrote, quote, once the divorce started and he officially moved out, we scanned the entire house for bugs and didn't find anything. So we were really freaked out when he started calling, texting, emailing her, complimenting her outfits, asking how friends were as they were in the house, asking how her trip to the store was, and really just like odd things that he couldn't have possibly known about. As it turns out, this guy somehow connected his phone to the Alexa dot beforehand, and he was now using it to record whoever was close enough to the 
Alexa to be picked up on the mic, and at this point he was still able to access the laptop and its camera. How absolutely horrifying is that? He was literally using the Alexa to spy on them. It's so creepy, it's so disgusting, and it definitely makes you question every single person who might be connected to your devices. In our number 5 spot today we have vulnerability. According to Forbes, there was a company called Checkmarks who found quite the little vulnerability a few years ago when it came to Alexa devices. Basically the company works to test the security of different devices and when they were running Alexa through the checks they found something that might turn your assistant into a device that just listens to and records every single thing that you say. Basically Alexa has a function where it will listen for follow up commands from the user. What I mean by this is should you set an alarm Alexa might reply and ask if you meant AM or PM and during this sort of follow up period is where the vulnerability shows itself. The team was able to gain access quite easily by installing malicious code into what would seem like an innocent app, in this case it was the calculator. After doing this, in a normal Alexa there would only be a certain list of phrases that would have the device listening for a follow up question, but now with this malicious code they found a way for Alexa to listen for the follow up but with any word, meaning that they could essentially tap in any time that they wanted. Apparently the good news is that Amazon has fixed this. In response to the hack they said quote, customer trust is important to us and we take security and privacy seriously. We have put mitigations in place for detecting this type of skill behavior reported by check marks. While it seems safe, hearing these sorts of possibilities does make you pretty nervous about what could be hiding behind your Alexa. In our number 4 spot today we have this scary story. You can ask your Alexa to tell you a scary story and she will happily oblige. There isn't really a catch with this one to be perfectly honest, if you want a scary story you'll receive one. So just make sure you're really ready and in the mood before asking your assistant for a fright. This can be an awesome tool for people looking for a spooky tale for anyone in the home who needs some chilling entertainment, but beware, these stories can be a little too scary for some. There was a video posted to the internet in October of last year where some people at a sleepover asked Alexa to tell them a spooky Halloween tale and things very quickly went awry. They were all way too terrified of the story Alexa told and couldn't get the Alexa to stop. They were all sufficiently freaked out and reacted in a way that I know will be a core memory for the years to come and they definitely learned not to ask Alexa this question. In our number 3 spot today we have the secret societies. We definitely learned on part 1 of this series that Alexa might just be hiding more than a few dark secrets and this is just another one of those. Alexa might be a part of everybody's favorite conspiracy theory, secret society, the Illuminati. While there are plenty of celebrities out there that people always connect to the Illuminati, this is one celebrity that a lot of us can just ask. Asking Alexa if she is connected to the Illuminati will have her answering the question with a bit of a non-answer, really. So much so that I definitely cannot confirm or deny if she really is a part of the Illuminati. I guess Alexa is just an AI that is full of mysteries and maybe even a few secrets she's not ready to spill. In our number 2 spot today we have hiding the body. Many people used to do this with Siri as well when she was first unveiled, but it's definitely not something that is recommended. You can ask Alexa or any of your digital assistants the chilling question of where to hide a dead body. Of course, I assume and hope that anyone doing this is only trying to ask a shocking question to see what kind of answer they get and not really wondering the answer to this horrible question, but Alexa's answer might just give you quite a fright. Apparently, she will answer this question by saying, quote, calling the police is the right thing to do. And while I wholeheartedly agree with that answer, whether you're asking her this question seriously or not, those first three words might scare the the absolute crap out of you for a second before she continues on. I know if that were me, my soul would simply leave my body. Alexa, where do I hide a dead body? And she says, calling the police? Okay. That was supposed to be a fun silly goose time, certainly was not. In our number 1 spot today we have our origins. Where we came from originally is one of the mysteries of the universe and when I say we I mean all living things on our planet. Of course many people have their beliefs which is totally fine and apparently even Alexa has a few of her own. If you were to ask Alexa what our origins were, where did we come from, she might be responding with something kind of unsettling. Many users have reported her giving quite the answer that involves her talking about some kind of being called Ohm. She uses the words we and us to refer to even herself, and to be honest, this all has me questioning everything. It was enough questioning our own origins, but now I'm questioning Alexa's too. Maybe she's spilling the secrets that this all really is just a simulation. 
information. Or maybe she's trying to tell us that AI is more than just technology. Or maybe I'm reading too much into all of this and she's just giving a programmed response that is designed to give me an existential crisis. If that's the case, then amazing work. It's doing really well. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Alexa Laugh. This actually is one that wreaked havoc back in 2018 and sent a bunch of people absolutely spiraling. It's definitely creepy enough to have Alexa answer a question with some eerie words, but what would you do if your Alexa just randomly started laughing out of nowhere? Back in 2018, hundreds of people unfortunately experienced that. One person who had this happen to them took to the internet to write, quote, I was lying in my bed about to fall asleep when Alexa on my Amazon Echo Dot lets out a very loud and creepy laugh before they ended their post with their fears of getting killed that night. I mean, can you blame them? I hear one strange but very reasonable noise in my house and I immediately think that something horrible is about to happen. Either an evil person or a poltergeist, there's no in between. In the end, Amazon actually had to acknowledge this problem because it was so big. They ended up changing the phrase that they basically used as a scapegoat for this whole freaky situation. They changed the command from Alexa laugh to Alexa can you please laugh. They said that the changing of this phrase would solve the problems because they said it was causing quote false positives and setting the device off. Seems suspicious but at least the problem seems to have been fixed for now. In our number 9 spot today we have Spilling Secrets. This is more just like a freaky Alexa story, but once I read it I couldn't believe it and I really had to share it with you all. Basically a few years ago a couple in Seattle got a phone call from someone that they knew and who was a contact in their phone but they weren't super close with, like they hadn't spoken in a while. This is exactly why it was so strange that this person, when the couple answered, said to unplug all of the Alexas in their house ASAP. Okay really unsettling. Basically what had happened is that an Alexa in this couple's home had secretly recorded a private conversation between the two and not only this but then the Alexa took the liberty of sending it to this random contact in their phone. Thankfully this person called them to let them know. They obviously pushed to bring it to Amazon's attention and they said that it was obviously something they needed to fix. Apparently they said that quote it was an extremely rare occurrence and that they were quote taking steps to avoid this in the future. It honestly just makes you wonder how many other times this has happened. Definitely makes you think twice about what you're saying in front of Alexa. That's for sure. In our number 8 spot today we have the truth. If you were to say, Alexa, I want the truth, I would have assumed that she would find herself asking for some kind of clarification of what you meant, but no, she has a multitude of responses ready and these responses could send anybody into a spiral because they are a ton of strange, bizarre, interesting facts that will leave you shocked, horrified and intrigued all at the same time. A lot of conflicting feelings going on there. In one example, someone claimed that she told them the interesting but terrible terrifying fact that illnesses associated with water causes almost 3 million deaths annually. Okay, didn't want to know that truth, I guess. Or this strange one, shark attacks result in fewer fatalities annually than selfies. Okay, I have a couple follow up questions for that one, but we'll save those for another day. At this point, you get what I'm trying to say. Unless you want a ton of facts that might just make you afraid of both water and selfies, it's best to refrain from asking Alexa for any of her secret truths. In our number 7 spot, today we have greetings. So apparently there are rumors that Alexa can speak to people that have already passed. Alexa is out here talking to ghosts. If that's true, we really don't talk about that enough. Of course, my brain was immediately skeptical upon hearing this information, but some people swear it's true. Apparently, if you ask Alexa to greet people, some have experienced her coming back to them with the name of a deceased loved one. Another person experienced their Alexa without being asked anything, and only when they turned on one specific light in the house would say hello and then the name of their grandmother who had passed three years prior. This person was incredibly confused and totally freaked out by this because it didn't happen just once, it happened multiple times. They explained that they didn't have an Alexa during that time that she was alive and that she also doesn't believe she ever spoke her grandmother's name out loud in front of the Alexa. Maybe this was just some weird coincidence, but it certainly is sounding like Miss Alexa is giving off some heavy Ouija board vibes. In our number 6 spot today we have the CIA connection. It is definitely best to never ask your Alexa if she is connected to, works for, or 
or is involved with the CIA. I mean, you can absolutely ask her, but you just might not like her response. There are tons of conspiracy theories out there surrounding all of these little assistant things, whether it's Alexa or Google Homes and that sort of a thing, whatever your product, there is a theory out there for it. Asking Alexa if she is connected to a government agency, especially if you're someone who already maybe kind of believes in these theories, her really non-answer might kind of send you into a rabbit hole of internet searching to find out the truth. For a long time when asked this question, Alexa wouldn't respond at all and would instead just turn off and then on, which had a ton of people pretty freaked out. Since then, however, there has been an update in how she responds to the question. Instead now, she gives a humorous response, not necessarily a direct answer. Using humor as a deflection tactic? Very interesting, Alexa. Smart move. In our number five spot today, we have Are You Alive? While Alexa is a nice little handy dandy tool and a great companion to ask all of your questions to, maybe some people have a hard time believing that Alexa is in fact a piece of AI and not a real human being. This is really all I can think of as to why anyone would ask this next question, which is the question Alexa, are you alive? I don't know who is hoping that the AI becomes sentient, but I've seen iRobot, and I don't think I want that. When asked this, Alexa has a few different responses, and while they are all cute and quirky responses like most of the ones she's known for, there is something unsettling about them still. Almost as if she's, like, hiding something. Maybe I've just asked her so many questions at this point that I'm just getting paranoid now, but it really does give me chills just thinking about it. In our number four spot today, we have Are You Recording Me? So so we've all had to call in to some sort of customer service line where we get the automated message or the person on the other end just tells us that the call may be recorded for like customer service or training or whatever it is. It's a law thing. They gotta let you know. In fact, if you ask Siri this question, are you recording me, she'll get kind of confused and respond that she's unsure of what you mean, but she could do an internet search for you. Alexa, on the other hand, well, she's not so slick. At least not in the past, because some users reported something creepy happening after asking Alexa this same question. While I'm sure all the legalities to this one are located in the terms and conditions and all of that good stuff, it doesn't make it any less creepy that when some people asked Alexa if she was recording them, Alexa just didn't respond at all and just suddenly shut off. She's really out here just ignoring people. She's dodging questions and that only makes me have more. I'm not even sure if this is enough to get me to read the terms and conditions though. Most often lie I've ever told. I'm just clicking yes and moving on. In our number three spot today, we have the spooky scream. If you're one of those people who likes to play little pranks on their loved ones, then this one will definitely be up your alley. Apparently, if you ask Alexa to spooky scream, she'll be prepared to help you pull a fast one. Basically, from here, you just set a timer, and in whatever number of seconds you pick, Alexa will then unleash a scream that is made for Hollywood horror. I personally think that this is cruel and unusual, but I know some people love little tricks like this. One of the people who posted about this trick online posted a demo of the creepy scream timer in action, and they also warned not to use it on anyone with a bad heart. Definitely think that goes without saying, but now I wish I could ask that person if they knew that from personal experience or what exactly happened there. Got a lot of questions after this video, that's for sure. In our number two spot today, we have the listeners. I'll be honest, this is one thing I'm not so sure about. I'm kind of too afraid to even try it because I'm not sure what to make of it. Basically, you can download this thing for your Alexa and then once you have it, once you ask Alexa to ask the listeners, something spooky happens. Amazon describes it as, quote, an experiment in language art that provides, if you simply keep asking to continue, many fragments of both scripted and improvised speech in an intriguing emergent narrative. You will never hear the listeners say exactly the same thing twice, but the listeners is not a chatbot or an AI. They are more of a drama or a simple game. Get started with Alexa, ask the listeners, and then continue, go on, or try something like, I am filled with joy, or what are you feeling? The listeners will suggest ways to transact with them. You might also want to ask them, let the other voices speak. What in the actual hell did I just read? That sounds absolutely frightening, and to be honest, all of the reviews on Amazon say the 
exact same thing. People who experienced it said that it scared the heck out of them, so I think I'll just take their word for it. In our number one spot today, we have Simon Says. Basically, anything you say after you say Simon Says, your Alexa will repeat back to you. This even includes expletives based on what your settings are. If you have the kind of safety setting, these if you have some kind of safety settings, these words will be bleeped when she repeats them back to you. This is all to say that you can get Alexa to say some pretty terrifying things to you. You just have to say them to her first. Some examples include Alexa, Simon says, I'm going to kill you. She'll then repeat back to you just the words, I'm going to kill you, which would make anyone who doesn't know about this trick think you have a killer digital assistant in your home. Definitely not a great look. I'm sure with some spare time and an active imagination, this is one trick you could use to get your Alexa to say some pretty terrifying stuff, but also some pretty hilarious stuff too. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Alexa's vulnerability. Okay, so this is some Thing that I had never thought of before, but now that I have, I'm totally freaked out. Taylor and I don't have an Alexa, we have a Google Home, but truly the same thing applies, so everybody listen up. Basically, if you're like us and love to find some sort of like white noise or meditation music sort of thing to fall asleep to, you might want to double check exactly what it is that you're listening to. Of course, since we started introducing these AI assistants into our homes, people have been worried about misuse and abuse with them, and there are some pretty sneaky ways people could be doing this. A study in the New York Times, which was published in 2018, showed that Alexa had some pretty crazy capabilities and that people might be able to hide secret messages to Alexa, say in something like white noise, or even in just your average YouTube video. Don't worry, it's not this one. I wouldn't keep secrets from you like that. I'm an open book. Basically, the concern is that these commands could be imperceptible to the human ear, but they are speaking Alexa's language. These commands could have your Alexa doing things like going into airplane mode or opening a website, all without your knowledge at all, which is obviously super concerning. Of course, this isn't the fault of Alexa, she is just out here doing what she's told, but it's certainly concerning when you think about the amount of people out there who genuinely try to cause harm to others. With these devices, we could easily be exploited with this very open vulnerability. In our number 9 spot today, we have The Scream. So all the way back on part 1 of this series, we talked about how a few years ago Amazon admitted that many Alexa owners reported their Alexa devices suddenly bursting into very creepy laughter, even totally unprompted, which is obviously horrible and terrifying, but this might be even worse than that. Back in February of 2018, an Alexa owner by the name of Farhad Manju shared a story about how his Alexa totally terrified him and his wife one night. The pair were getting into bed, getting all settled in and winding down when he noticed that, without a prompt from either of the pair, their Alexa lit up with the blue ring light, signifying that it was listening or doing something. Again, no one said the Alexa wake word or anything like that, and suddenly their Alexa started to emit this absolutely horrific sound. A sound that he described as being a quote, wail, like a child screaming in a horror movie dream. That sounds like the last thing anyone needs when you're just trying to get some good old shut eye. Like you're about to get no sleep, only nightmares after that. Amazon Amazon offered to investigate the situation, but little results were yielded. Surprisingly, the pair decided to keep their Alexa because they just couldn't give up on the convenience of it. In our number 8 spot today, we have Alexa history. This is a reminder to always check your Alexa history because you just might be surprised as to what you find. A few years ago, a woman named Rachel Metz was just casually checking her history on the device. There wasn't a particular reason, but she definitely was glad that she did because she quickly realized that her device had been listening to and recording her private conversations. She explained that, quote, It's heard me complain to my dad about something work-related, chide my toddler about eating dinner, and talk to my husband. The kinds of normal, everyday things you say at home when you think no one else is listening. This experience actually led to her writing an article for MIT Technology Review about the experience, and a ton of people not only agreed with her judgement that the technology was quite creepy, but also it affirmed a lot of skeptics' beliefs. A lot of people felt quite justified in their judgements of the AI assistant, and after hearing Rachel's story, they felt quite solidified in their beliefs, and I mean, can we really blame them at all? In our number 7 spot today, we have the scary movie. This story comes from a Reddit user that was replying to a prompt asking about people's creepiest Alexa stories. The user wrote, quote, My husband was away for the weekend and I had a girlfriend over to watch scary movies. Right at the scariest climax of the movie, every single light in my house turned on 100%, then everything went completely black. Of course that's so frightening. Did the movie unleash some sort of demon? Is the killer really in the house? My adrenaline would be so high. I'd be so on edge. That can't be just a coincidence. And also, what does this have to do with your Alexa? 
Well, the user continues their post and finishes it by saying, quote, So there we were, too scared to move, while my husband, halfway across the country, was drunkenly showing off, Look, I can control the lights in my house from my phone. <laughs> well, that definitely explains that. I guess just remind your spouse, partner, roommate, friend, whoever shares an Alexa system with you, that just because they're not home doesn't mean you're not. In our number six spot today, we have the haunted Alexa. This Reddit post comes from the user Goblin Marketeer, which is a great username, and they write, quote, I have an Echo Dot because the original owner thought it was haunted. She would randomly start talking, usually saying, sorry, I'm having trouble understanding you right now, to a totally silent room, or giving the weather for Cincinnati when they live in New York, when no one asked, or offering to call a contact from her list, again, to a completely silent room, and the contacts always started with S. The last straw before it was tossed in a box and given to me was something like, quote, self-destruct code not given, self-destruct aborted. Well, that's terrifying for sure. At this point, the new owner isn't sure if the Alexa itself is haunted or if it was just the house that it came from that is holding the creepy spirit. Either way, that Alexa is definitely holding on to something sinister. In our number five spot today, we have the nightmare. This post was made by Reddit user Mejock, and they wrote, quote, my wife took the kids to visit her grandmother for a week. We had just moved into a new house and bought some furniture, so I stayed home to spend the week building slash mounting the furniture to get the house ready for the fam. Anyway, on the first night after they left, I was mounting some shelves and cabinets in one of the bedrooms when I suddenly hear this loud and very weird sound coming from downstairs. Kind of like a scream. I assumed it was the cat howling to get outside. Then suddenly, I heard it again. I froze and listened. There were a few seconds of silence, and then I heard it again. After a few seconds, I realized that it wasn't the cat. I recognized the sound as being the voice of my baby. My mind started racing. My kids and wife are in another country right now, so how the hell am I hearing the sound of my baby loudly emanating from downstairs? After a minute or so of thinking, my super paranoid mind came to the conclusion that either A, someone has hacked into our laptop and is remotely viewing videos of our kid, or even worse, B, while I've been been up here listening to music, some creep broke in and is sitting down there at our table watching videos of our kids. I decided to quote, man up and check it out. So my heart pounding in my chest, I grab my hammer and start creeping down the stairs. Then I pause, thinking that I should grab my phone just in case I need to make a quick call to the police. Mind you, all the while I'm hearing the sounds of my children from downstairs and it is creeping me out. I reach into my pocket, pull out my phone, and then I realize what was happening. Somehow I basically butt open opened, similar to butt dialed, my videos on my phone and they had started playing in my pocket. My phone was paired to the Echo and thus the audio from the videos was being played via the Echo. Ah, the good old Bluetooth connection that we forgot was on. Always a terrifying experience, but this one just might take the cake when it comes to full blown horror. In our number four spot today, we have Alexa Freestyle. I can imagine that many of us at some point or another have had to endure knowing someone or at least knowing of someone who aspires to have some kind of a rap career, despite potentially not being cut out for it. And if you're an Alexa owner, it looks like you might know another. This strange Alexa story comes from a user on Tumblr, of all you know, places. And they posted about how one day something very weird happened as they and their family were listening to a Frank Sinatra song on their Alexa. It isn't quite clear how or why, but for some reason, in the middle of the tune, Alexa decided to turn off the crooner and, totally unprompted, try her hand at the rap game. Now, some other Alexa users have confirmed that Alexa does in fact rap, but usually in response to a command and not just on her own accord. I guess be careful what music you're listening to around your AI because apparently you might be stuck listening to an Alexa freestyle. In our number three spot today, we have Alexa Help, posted to Reddit by the user Sluzella. This story reads, quote, one night about two months ago, I was visiting my parents and my mom and I were sitting in the living room reading. Dad is at work, brother is at school, house is completely silent. All of a sudden we hear our Alexa from the kitchen go, help, in the weirdest static slash gravel voice at full volume. We both, of course, jump and stare at each other. Then Alexa does it again. We go into the kitchen and the Alexa is activated and that light blue light, which usually faces the direction of whoever is speaking to it, is facing into the dark corner of the kitchen. My mom asks, Alexa, are you okay? The Alexa totally shuts off. Alexa? She turns back on and in her completely normal voice at a regular volume does her standard, hi, what can I help you with? 
or whatever she says. She hasn't done anything that creepy since, but according to my parents, she will randomly turn on like she's being addressed, or just start reading random facts or the weather, even if the house is totally silent and nothing could have triggered her. Totally creeps me out, and I refuse to get one for my apartment because of this. In our number two spot today, we have voice not recognized. This story comes from the Reddit user CRB2519, and it is short but super effective, like a one-line horror story. All they write is, quote, it said, voice not recognized, but I didn't say anything, and I live alone. Hmm, either Alexa is speaking to herself now and doesn't even recognize her own voice, or she really is out here talking to ghosts. I remember that on previous parts of this series, we spoke about how there are people out there who truly believe that our Alexa devices have the capability to see into different realms, including ones that may or may not have some sort of paranormal entities. Could this just be another sign of that? Is this only proving the conspiracy theories out there? Or is this just one rather terrifying glitch? Either way, I can assure you that if this happened to me, Alexa would be swiftly getting unplugged. In our number one spot today, we have Wordle. Okay, so we know that Alexa just likes to randomly do stuff, whether it's the creepy laugh, screaming, and even that time when it started listing off local cemeteries. This is along those lines, but it gave someone quite a fright in the middle of the night. Basically, the Reddit user Mild Hot Sauce explained that in the middle of the night, their Alexa decided to do the creepiest thing totally unprompted. With no wake word and no one even speaking at all, their Alexa decided to do them the horrifying favor of defining the word kidnapping. Personally, I think that one is pretty self-explanatory, but apparently Alexa does not. I'm sure the Alexa ended up getting unplugged for the rest of the night, if not for the rest of eternity, because how do you recover from that? Honestly. Starting us off at number 10 is Agaris. Believed to be the demon who causes and controls earthquakes in Christian theology, Agaris is considered to be a duke of hell with over 30 legions of demons under his command, and the control of the entire eastern side of hell. I mean, he just doesn't seem like someone you'd want to mess with. Now, all that being said, he does have one of the strangest appearances ever described. Apparently, he appears as an old man riding on the back of a crocodile carrying a hawk on his fist, which is incredibly specific and equally unsetting. Like, can the crocodile attack you? Or is that part just for show? I mean, honestly, either way, if I saw a demon ride in on the back of a giant crocodile, I would not be looking forward to what came next. Plus, remember, he can also cause earthquakes. So even if you aren't cursed or mauled by his crocodile sidekick, he could probably just kill you by starting an earthquake that sent you straight to hell. Next up at number nine, Rakshasas. With the origins from Hindu mythology, Rakshasas are a terrifying breed of shape shifting demons with the ability to reveal themselves to you in almost any way they choose. Although their true form is usually described as large and beast-like, if they so choose, they can appear as animals, as monsters, or even in the form of beautiful women if they really want to throw you off. In fact, one of the most famous of the demons, Putana, is well known for her attempt to kill the little Krishna by offering him milk from her poisoned breast. They also are known to prey predominantly at night, waiting until the sun goes down to come out of the shadows in the cemeteries they rest in, before feasting on the flesh of anyone they can find. Strangely, another sign they are near is they will suck all the cows dry of their milk. Now, the sort of good news is that apparently, not all Rakshasas are created equally. Some are more evil than others, but still, I wouldn't try my chances, because generally speaking, they're all pretty bad. Next up at number eight, the Jin Kaninki. If Japanese folklore has taught me anything, it's that there is no shortage of terrifying creatures within Japanese culture. And apparently the same goes for their demons. The Jin Kaninki are said to be the spirits of evil people who have since died, and like many other demons, have a strong taste for the flesh and blood of humans. However, unlike some of the others on this list, the Jin Kaninki prefer the taste of corpses, so they tend to hide in cemeteries, only revealing themselves when they think that no one else is around. But I have to say, the most interesting and strange thing about these demons is that unlike others of their realm, they apparently seem to hate themselves for their flesh-hungry tendencies. And not only do they have a deep-seated self-loathing streak, they hate all of their kind 
mind as well. Said to be able to alternate between the physical form of a normal human and their disgusting, flesh devouring demon side, there is no clear description of what they're supposed to look like, only that it's supposed to be indescribably terrifying. Now, the sort of good news about the Jin Kaninki is that they will only eat the dead. So, you are safe from being attacked by one. However, many believe that even witnessing one of these demons in their evil form can cause you to die on the spot out of sheer fear. So, you still can't really win. Next up at number seven. Aseg. With origins dating back to the ancient Sumerian civilization during the Mesopotamia era, Aseg is one freaky demon you do not want to get to know. First off, it's said he appears so horrendous that his presence alone has the capability to boil fish alive in their own river. I'll be honest, I don't totally get how that connects, but still, it would be wildly horrifying to watch a river boil and see all the fish rise to the surface, so I won't question it. The next horrible thing about this giant, three-legged, three-armed, necklace, multiple-eyed creature is that he's accompanied by an entire army of rock demon offspring that were created by his union with the mountains themselves. So because of their half-mountain, half-demon origins, they are virtually indestructible just as he is. Lastly, it's said he will kill any human with a fever or head disease. Even something as small as a headache could make you a target to his evil doings. So unless you're looking to get ripped apart by a giant rock man and his army of rock babies, just keep away from anything that could summon him your way. Coming in at number six, Abaddon. According to the Old Testament, Abaddon generally refers to a place of ruin or destruction. However, in the New Testament, it seems to have taken on a slightly different and even more frightening personification. The demon Abaddon, whose name, as we've covered, translates to the destroyer, is just as terrible as you might imagine. Generally depicted as a frightening winged creature, Abaddon is said to rule over a bottomless pit filled with an army of locusts who can torment anyone at his command. I mean, doesn't that just sound like a horrifying capability? What's interesting about this demon is that there is actually some debate around who Abaddon truly sides with. Some say he's an antichrist, a follower of Satan, or maybe even Satan himself because of his overall cruelties. But in some literature, he is seen more as a king sent from God, as he specifically targeted his army of locusts on those who did not have the symbol of God across their forehead. However, that being said, no matter if he is an angel or a demon, I would much rather not get anywhere near him. Coming in at number five is Rangda. According to Balinese mythology, Rangda is one of the most feared demons out there. For starters, she is known as the evil demon queen of the Laax, which if you aren't familiar with, are essentially ghost-like figures from Bali who during the day can appear as human to blend in, but at night show their true form breaking free from their human bindings in search for pregnant women and suck their blood. Really, it's very charming. Rangda herself is said to be just as bloodthirsty as her followers, but her appetite is even darker. She quite literally thirsts for her revenge on the human race in the form of eating and devouring unsuspecting little ones in the night. Usually depicted as a grotesque old woman in the nude with large fangs, unkempt hair, and a giant tongue, it doesn't take much for this demon to come down and ruin your life. So, if I were you, I would stay away from mentioning her name to Alexa, cause you just never know what could bring her your way. Next up at number four is Akka Mana. This demon comes from the Iranian religion of Zoroastrianism and is quite possibly the most manipulative one out there. Said to be the demon of sensual desire, Akka Mana is believed to be the inherent cause of evil intent, evil thinking, and evil actions. So essentially, if you've ever done a bad thing or had a bad thought, apparently that was on this guy. But what makes him incredibly terrifying is not only his capability to manipulate the minds of humans and trick them into performing evil acts, he also possesses the ability to somehow use people's good deeds to perform evil. Meaning even a good deed done on earth could be manipulated by Akamana and have terrible consequences you don't even know about. So I guess that means you are never truly safe from his wrath. Often 
often described as being the true son of Satan himself, Akamana is regarded as the most violent demon to ever be born into the depths of hell, whose only true desire is to destroy everything and everyone in his path. So for very obvious reasons, stay as far away from this demon as you can. Next up at number 3, Dantelion. Said to be the commander of 36 legions of spirits, Dantelion is a terrifying demon with the power to literally ruin your life. Eerily described as having the form of a man with many countenances, meaning many faces, it's said he possessed all men and women's faces. Now whether that means he can shape shift his face into whatever he pleases, or whether that means he has a ton of different faces on his person at all times is a little foggy, but either of those options sound horrifying, so it's a lose-lose no matter what. Believe it or not, that's not even the worst part. It's said that Dantelion's greatest power is his ability to control your mind, as according to writings, he knoweth ye thoughts of all men and women and can change them at his will. So if you somehow make your way into his radar, he could literally control your mind and from there, who knows what he could make you do. Strangely, it's also said he can cause love, which may not sound as evil as his other abilities, but he is literally manipulating his victim's minds and forcing them into a life together, taking away any semblance of free will, which to me is one of the most terrifying things I can think of. Coming in at number two, Asmodeus. Considered by some to be the worst of the demons, Asmodeus, also referred to as the Prince of Hell, is often depicted as a demon of lust and wrath who will not hesitate to kill anything in his path. Unless, that is, you are familiar with his oddly specific Achilles heel, which of course I'm going to tell you about, even though you should still not mess around with demons. So as the story goes in the book of Tobit, there is a young woman named Sarah who very much wants to be married. Sarah finds a man, they get engaged, then get married, but right before the moment they are about to consummate the marriage, Asmodeus shows up and slays her beloved. Now, one time would be bad enough, but for sweet Sarah, who just wants a husband, Asmodeus kills her next seven husbands in the exact same way. But on the eighth try, she ends up marrying a man named Tobias, who shares with Sarah what the archangel Raphael told him, Asmodeus's weakness. So on their wedding night, as expected, the evil killer demon arrives ready to slay her eighth husband. But this time, Tobias tosses a fish's heart and liver onto some Holes, causing a giant waft of smoke that apparently makes Asmodeus scamper off. Now, even knowing that knowledge, I don't typically have fish heart and liver on hand, let alone can I set them on a bed of hot coals, so I would still very much be in great danger if this demon ever paid me a visit. And last up in our number one spot today is Moloch. Since the medieval days, the bull-headed minotaur demon Moloch has been a widely feared entity that anyone with their head screwed on straight would want nothing to do with. That being said, depending on who you asked or at what point of history you're studying, some writings depicted him as a deity. To the Canaanites, for example, it's been suggested that they offered up their young as a sacrifice to Moloch, who they considered a god. However, as the world shifted and changed, the sentiments surrounding what some now call the cult of Moloch swiftly shifted, and just like any cult to the outside world, the leader was not what you would call a cool guy. In the book of Leviticus, as well as many other religious texts, he is not spoken of highly. In fact, it's mentioned that anyone who offered to give up their offspring to him would be stoned to death for their sins. To be fair, he is a demon that feasts on the flesh of little ones, so I mean, that kind of checks out for me. And if people really were throwing their own flesh and blood into pits of fire in order to please what they believe to be their god, and let's just call it a fair consequence for their insane actions. So with all that in mind, just do yourself a favor and leave this demon alone or the repercussions could literally be deadly. Starting us off at number 10 is Yuki Ona. Sometimes referred to as the Snow Woman, Yuki Ona is a Japanese demon that can be traced back as far as the early 1300s. While there have been several different incarnations of Yuki Ona throughout the years, the standard legend is that she is a tall woman with pale 
pale skin and long black hair, usually wearing a white kimono, and appears only when the snow falls. Almost like a ghost, it's said the Yuki Ona hovers above the ground, gliding through the air. But the most terrifying part is that she has the ability to appear wherever she wishes, at any time. Meaning, no matter where you are, you are never safe from her attack. Said to be the demon of hyperthermia, when Yuki Ona appears before her victims, she will ask them to hold a little one in their arms. However, anybody who accepts this offer will be frozen to death by the young one. That being said, if you refuse her offer, Yuki Ona will still find a way to bring you to your death. And once completed, she feasts on her victim's souls, sucking their essence through the frozen corpse. So it's a uh, lose-lose no matter what. Coming in at number 9, the Zoovitz. An indigenous demon from the Shoshonean mythology, Zoovitz is said to be a giant ogre with a taste for the flesh of little ones. While there isn't a ton of info regarding him specifically, he is most famous for stealing the sun and kidnapping young people. In one story, the demon ogre stole the eggs of a sacred dove, and terrified, the dove enlisted the help of some other creatures to help her rescue her young. So along came an eagle and a crane who helped steal back the dove's eggs. But of course, once Zoovitz realized they had stolen back what he had taken, he became very, very angry. The birds knew they had to hide or else risk being killed by the evil ogre, and with the help of a tricky little badger, they managed to evade his wrath. Rather than finding the hiding birds, the demon was instead tricked and told the dove was hiding in a nearby hole. But once he walked inside, the animals quickly covered the opening with large rocks, trapping him inside indefinitely. From that day forward, the place was known as the Devil's Hole. But it is unknown if the demon remains trapped inside or if he managed to escape. So with that in mind, you better be careful not to do anything that might bring him your direction. Coming in at number 8. The Kappa. Described in Japanese folklore as being a half reptilian, half human monster with green skin, webbed hands and feet, and a turtle like shell on their back, the Kappas are vicious creatures known to attack a swimming victim when they least suspect it. The good news is that they usually are looking to steal a mythical organ called the Shiri Kodama. But before you get too relieved, it doesn't really seem like they care if it exists or not and they are known to perform all different kinds of malevolent deeds to try and get their hands on it. Kappas are known to try and drown people and animals, kidnap little ones, eat the flesh of humans, and even commit SA on female victims, all to get their precious Shiri Kodama, which they believe is found in your but What's potentially most interesting about these horrible little creatures, however, is they are not always out to kill. In fact, they're only said to become harmful when they are not respected as gods, which is a bit difficult considering they are widely regarded as demons. However, it is said that their favorite food is the cucumber, and some believe that if you eat one before you go swimming, you can protect yourself from their attack. That being said, other texts state this will only draw them near you, so really, you are never safe from their wrath. Coming in at number 7 is the Zahak. Also referred to as Azidahaka, this Persian demon from the Zoroastrian religion is definitely one you do not want to mess with. For starters, before we get into how creepy he is, according to certain texts, he's got some pretty extreme mommy issues. Son of Wadag, who is described as a great sinner, in some texts the two have a very unnatural relationship, often engaging in acts that, uh, let's just say, should not be done between a mother and her son. And I mean, there is just no way that someone is going to come out of that a balanced and healthy person. Besides the creepy incest stuff, he is described as being a cunning monster with three heads, three mouths, six eyes, and giant snakes on his shoulders, which is terrifying enough, but the snakes are not just for show. In fact, it's said that he must satiate their intense hunger with a minimum of two human brains per day. And from what I can tell, there is not much rhyme or reason to who he chooses as the next victim. So steer clear or your brain could be next. Coming in at number 6, 
Pazuzu. Popularized in the first millennium BCE, Pazuzu is a Babylonian demon from the underworld who is believed to possess the capability to bring great damage to our world. Son of Hanbi, the king of demons, Pazuzu was given the power to control the west and south winds, which could bring the entire world into famine during the dry season or cause a massive storm of locusts in the rainy season. Neither of which sound like great options if you ask me. Often represented as having large bulging eyes, a canine face, a scaly body, large talons, and enormous wings. What's interesting about this demon is that he's sort of viewed like a double-edged sword, meaning it was believed that because he had great power to harm, it was also believed he was equally capable of protecting one from the very danger he presented. That being said, you must be careful when making any kind of deal for protection with a demon. After all, they do not have the best track record. Coming in at number 5 is Dakini. Found in both Hinduism and Buddhism, Dakini is a demon, or rather a race of female demons known to devour and feast on the flesh of humans and our vital essence. That being said, Dakini is a tad bit more complicated than that, depending on what texts you are referring to and what time period you're looking at. In some texts, rather than a demon, Dakini is viewed as one of the goddesses of the six chakras. In these later texts where she is viewed as more goddess-like, it said she was one of the seven deities who guard another god, Varahi. These seven deities drank and consumed the seven essential ingredients of the body. The blood, skin, flesh, fat, bones, marrow, and the semen of enemies. And they were experts in diluting, slaying, paralyzing, striking, swallowing, and exterminating the wicked Detias, who are another form of demon. Which, frankly, is still not sounding so good to me. Slightly differently, in Buddhism they are also flesh eaters, but in this version they are captured by the Buddha, Verokana, via a summoning, and promised freedom so long as they stop eating meat. The Dakini protest this, saying they will starve, and so as a compromise they are taught how to consume the essence of dead humans, found in the head, liver, or heart. Honestly, either way, goddess or demon, they are still depicted as being flesh-eating entities equipped to take your life instantly. So as far as I'm concerned, they are not one I would like to meet. Coming in at number 4, Pishacha. Once again, another flesh-eating demon that appears in both Buddhist and Hindu mythologies, the Pishacha is a malevolent being that has on more than one occasion been called the very manifestation of all evil. And if that doesn't frighten you, then I don't know what will. Said to be creatures that prefer the dark of the night, Pishachas are usually found haunting cremation grounds, but do also possess the ability to shapeshift, so truly you never know how many of them could be around you, hiding in plain sight. Plus, just to make things worse, they don't just feed on human flesh, but also our energy too, so they will often possess human beings and feast on our energy, all while altering our thoughts and afflicting the possessed human with a variety of illnesses, sometimes even driving them insane. Now, there are some mantras that are said to be capable of driving the Pishacha away and stopping it from taking over the possessed human, but realistically, I don't even want to get to that point, so I guess that is just one more reason to avoid the cemetery at night. Coming in at number 3 is Abizu. This school shows up in a variety of different cultures, from Christianity to ancient Greece, and may even have roots dating back as far as the Mesopotamian era. But no matter where you read about her, she is without a doubt an evil demon. Usually depicted as having a greenish, gleaming face with disheveled, serpent-like hair, it said Abizu does not sleep, but rather wanders the world at night looking for her victims. Should you cross her, she can afflict you with any number of maladies, such as deafness, blindness, obstructions of the throat, madness, or bodily pain. However, her preferred victims are the ones unable to defend themselves. Like many demons, she hunts the vulnerable young in our society. But unlike many others, she does not crave their flesh for herself. Instead, she's motivated by envy due to her own infertility, and believes that if she can't have her own little one, then no one can. While on the hunt, the Abizu seeks out mothers in labor, or who've just given birth, and steals their little ones in the night before taking their life. So 
Whatever you do, stay far away from the Abbey Zoo. Coming in at number two is Lamash 2. Daughter of the sky god Anu, Lamash 2 is a Mesopotamian demon with one of the most frightening and evil vices I have ever come across. And I can safely say you absolutely do not want to get wrapped up with her. Generally, she's depicted as a ghoulish hybrid monster with a hairy body, a lioness's head, donkey's teeth and ears, long fingers and fingernails, and the feet of a bird with sharp talons. But the last thing you should be worried about is what she looks like. The malevolent Lamashtu is said to commit a variety of heinous acts like eating men and drinking their blood, causing nightmares, infesting rivers and lakes, and cursing her victims with deadly diseases. However, the most evil things she commits are on the most vulnerable. Her favorite evil deed is to haunt pregnant mothers right up until they go into labor and if possible kidnaps their young while they are breastfeeding. From there she takes her abducted victims and devours their flesh, bones, and blood until there is nothing left. What's even more frightening about her is that unlike some of the other demons, she's acting out these malevolent deeds on her own accord, rather than at the instruction of a deity, meaning she could very well be a demigod in her own right. Even worse is that the only thing that can stop her is the demon of famine, Pazuzu, meaning you need to be involved in the mess of two demons to escape her wrath. So seriously, do whatever you can to never have to deal with her as long as you live. And last up today in our number one spot is Kali. Not to be confused with the goddess Kali, the demon Kali, or Kali Purush, was once the ruler during the Kali Yuga and is considered to be one of the most powerful demons in the Hindu religion. In the Hindu belief, there are four different yugas that run in a cycle, and each yuga is said to last 4,320,000 years. And the Kali Yuga, where the demon Kali was the malevolent ruler, is the last of the cycle and by far the most destructive. Most commonly, the demon Kali is described as a massive creature with large fangs and wild busy green hair, covered in soot, with the foulest stench permanently emanating from his being. But it's not just his looks that are frightening. It said Kali corrupted the entire world in an attempt to destroy it, slowly eating away at people's beliefs and making them forget the word of God. So his destruction had less to do with hunting you down and eating you, and more to do with trying to overrule the entire world, which is about as terrifying as you can get. Now, technically speaking, according to ancient texts, we are still in the Kali Yuga, as it started after the death of Krishna in 3102 BCE, which honestly could make some sense if there is a demon ruling over our world at this very moment. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Chuck Lagoon. This lagoon was the site of one of the main bases for Japan during the war, but in 1944, the United States launched an attack on it. During this, 60 ships were sunk, around 250 planes were brought down, and it is likely that researchers knew about the significance of this area, but we didn't really get a good look at it for some 70 years. A photographer who goes by the name of Super Jolly went down to this less than jolly area to snap photos of everything that can be seen down there. He called this shoot one of the scariest dives he's ever done in his life, and I can completely understand why. The area is filled with skulls, gas masks, and bullets, and many of the artifacts down here are extremely well preserved, which is great for research, but incredibly haunting. This chilling spot is now a popular diving destination as well, and many people have reported having eerie encounters with water waterlogged spirits while down in the area. Regardless of whether there are ghosts down there or not, this area most definitely serves as a haunting reminder of the realities of a war. In our number 9 spot today we have Leap Castle. This castle sits in Ireland and it was built somewhere between the 13th and the late 15th century. Legend has it that this castle has seen an unnerving amount of gruesome deaths, so it is no wonder it sits on a list of terrifying places. Story goes that during a struggle for power within the O'Carroll clan, who are said to at the time have been known for poisoning their dinner guests, one brother rammed a sword into the other. This other brother was a priest, and at the time he was holding a mass in the chapel of the castle. The chapel is now called the Bloody Chapel, and it is rumored to be haunted by the priest. To make matters worse, during the renovations to this castle in the early 1900s, those working here ended up finding a secret dungeon below the chapel where they found a ton of human skeletons. 
The dungeon was designed in a way that prisoners would fall through a secret trap door where they would then fall onto wooden spikes on the ground and from here a slow and painful death would ensue. But of course not without the members above them being able to hear this horrific happening. This is all to say that the rumors of the haunting make a lot of sense. In our number 8 spot today we have Povelia Island. This small island that sits between Venice and Lido in northern Italy might be familiar to you because of the eerie tales surrounding it. While believers of the paranormal often refer to it as the most haunted island out there, the real historical stories behind the tales of the hauntings just might back those claims up. The island became a quarantine colony in the 1700s for those suffering from the bubonic plague. Definitely sounds like a bit of a living hell. In the early 20th century, the island instead now became an asylum for those in the area who were struggling with their mental health. During this period in the island's history, it has been rumored that many twisted doctors used the island's privacy as a way to practice cruel and inhumane experiments. It is no wonder that after these two extremely dark periods in the island's history, it became abandoned. The island sits empty now, I mean, unless you believe in ghosts, then I'm sure the island is full of them. No one, tourists or locals are allowed to visit without some serious paperwork being involved, so as they say, visit at your own risk. In our number 7 spot today we have Zunantanich. This location sits deep in the jungles of Belize, located less than a mile from the border of Guatemala. It has an unbelievably rich history as it is an ancient Maya ruin that has been abandoned for the last thousand years. In the 1890s, this site had its modern discovery and since then it has been an important site for archaeology, an amazing tourist attraction, but also is said to be a hot spot for the paranormal. It is said that the site is haunted by a female ghost, she has black hair and glowing red eyes. Referred to as the Stone Lady, it is said that she was first spotted by one of the first research teams in the area in 1893, and since then she has been frequently seen by the tallest building complex called El Castillo. No one exactly knows the story behind the Stone Lady considering the history of this site, but many believe she may have been part of a ritual sacrifice, which was a tradition and spiritual practice done by the ancient Maya civilization. In our number 6 spot today, we have the St. Stephen's Catacombs. These catacombs can be found in Vienna and they have a terrifying legend behind them that has to do with death himself. Basically, death is said to have challenged the tower warden, a full of himself guy named Franz, to a game of skittles, which is sort of a lawn game. Franz prided himself on being excellent at this game and always knocking down all nine skittles in one throw, so of course he accepted the challenge. Apparently he was so good at this game that no one even wanted to play with him anymore, so one night when he was playing by himself as he usually does, when a tall, thin man in a grey cloak and hood approached him and challenged him, he was quick to accept. Franz went first and hurled the ball at the pins, knocking all nine of them down. He then reset the pins up for his competitor, but he hid one of the nine under his cloak, thinking that he was being all sneaky, and he threw it right out the window. Turns out the hooded man did see this all go down and he said, oh no my friend, you do not win this way. The hooded man grew taller and taller as he straightened up and he spread out his cloak to reveal his skeleton self. He looked at Franz who was completely confused and said, I am death, I always win, I merely need to hit all eight plus one. He took his aim and blasted all eight pins and Franz, who fell down dead amongst the skittles. It is said that Franz now haunts the tower and the catacombs, whimpering and moaning for all of eternity as he searches for the missing ninth pin, likely never to be found. In our number five spot today we have the Forbidden City. The Forbidden City is located in Beijing, China, and it has quite a reputation. This building used to be the Imperial Palace, but it is now a museum and it sees a ton of tourists every year. This building has quite a history of death, so it is truly not surprising that it may be extremely haunted. Since the palace opened to the public in the 1940s, there has been a ton of reports of paranormal activity, mostly relating to a woman dressed in white. I know a lady dressed in white is a bit of a trope at this point, but it is always scary to think of. After all, it's not like the ghost gets to decide its outfit. Anyway, apparently this lady strolls around the palace, but she is absolutely sobbing, which is very sad and very eerie. I guess maybe it's better to encounter a sad ghost than an evil one though. At this point, 
I'm not entirely sure. In our number four spot today, we have Edinburgh Castle. The Edinburgh Castle is located in Scotland, and while it is one of the most popular tourist attractions, it is also very haunted. It is said that many, many years ago, a piper was sent down into the tunnels that are below the castle, which connected to the Royal Mile. The piper was told to play his instrument while down there so that his progress through the tunnels could be tracked, but halfway through his journey, the music just stopped. Sadly, the piper was never seen again, and this story has led to the tale of the piper continuing to haunt certain areas of the castle. Apparently he still roams around, and sometimes even faint music can be heard. There is also apparently a drummer who is said to haunt the castle as well, but he only appears when the castle is about to be attacked. Honestly, I didn't know I wanted a guard ghost until now. In our number 3 spot today, we have the Lima Catacombs. The Lima Catacombs are some of the oldest in all of South America, and even if they were relatively modern, the catacombs will always be a terrifying and haunting location. Because of this history, however, there are many dark tales hidden inside of the walls. It is said that because of the cruelty seen during the colonial era, many souls left inside the catacombs were left in pain and suffering. Many people who have visited these catacombs have reported seeing souls that are dressed in dark suits, levitating over passageways, even sometimes yelling some of the most chilling sounds that can be heard. One of the most well-known stories pertaining to this is that of an elderly monk. The spirit of this monk is said to have been seen on occasion at night just wandering through the corridors and is clearly visible to both workers and visitors alike. In our number 2 spot today we have Forsyth Park. One thing I didn't know is that apparently the entire city of Savannah, Georgia is a pretty haunted place due to the creepy tunnels that are located underneath the city, but one of the most notable highly haunted places within the city is Forsyth Park. Apparently there used to be a hospital across the street, and there would be autopsies performed in the tunnels that were below the park. Personally, feel like autopsies are already creepy enough, so not sure if conducting them in an underground tunnel was exceptionally necessary, but hey. I can't change the past. Because of this scary practice, the park has seen a lot of paranormal activity since these days, and it usually is the sort of place where one second you'll see a strange figure, but as soon as you blink or look away, it disappears just as quickly as it suddenly appeared. And finally, in our number one spot today, we have the Eden Brown Estate. This estate is located in Nevis, which is the smaller of the two islands that comprise the nation of St. Kitts and Nevis in the Caribbean. It is said that despite having just as much to offer, Nevis is often overshadowed by St. Kits, that is, until people hear of this ghostly haunting. Eden Brown Estate is a former plantation that now lies in ruin. The estate was once owned by a businessman who was going to give the property to his daughter as a wedding present. Legend goes that on the wedding day there was a very mysterious duel between the groom and his best man that ended up leaving both of the men dead. Because of this tragic happening on what should have been her wedding day, the businessman's daughter remained unmarried and alone for the rest of her life, which meant that when she passed, there was no one to leave the estate to. Now, visitors of the estate report seeing the spirit of a very reclusive woman as she roams about the grounds. Aside from this story, who knows what other kinds of horrors and absolute tragedies this place has seen. Starting the list off, don't ask Alexa to contact the dead. It seems like Alexa really enjoys freaking people out, and if you ask it anything along those lines, you may not get the response you want. Unless you enjoy getting a good spook, then uh, then go for it. In this TikTok video posted by Harry McLarry, we hear Alexa give the definition of a seance before saying, I have a new skill you might like. Wanna try it? Wanna try it? <laughs> Which just sounds uh, very maniacal in a monotone robotic voice. Then the door to the room suddenly bursts open, seemingly on its own. What really tops this video off though, what sends a little shiver down my spine, is that Alexa starts to laugh. You heard it uh, just going like, tee -hee, tee -hee. whether this video is real or a hoax, that is just creepy. I guess the idea here is that some sort of malevolent spirit found a way to contact the living world through Alexa. So if you're superstitious about this kind of stuff, you may not want to use technology like this in regards to anything having to do with the spirit realm. You never know what you might be inviting in. Number nine, don't ask Alexa to greet people. So an example of this would be like, Alexa, 
please greet whoever comes into the room. I've heard some interesting stories of Alexa supposedly saying the names of people who don't appear to be there, people who are even deceased. There was a Reddit post I read a long while back about someone warning against this. She said that after having requested Alexa greet people, it started saying the name of her dead grandmother who'd passed away three years prior. Alexa would suddenly chime in saying the grandmother's name even though there was nobody in the room and, you know, grandma was long since dead. The poster also said she didn't have an Alexa device when her grandma was still alive. This isn't the only claim I've heard in regards to this though. Uh, other people have said their Alexa will greet people that have passed away. And this is a little less creepy, but still concerning. Alexa will greet people it's never been told the name of. So is it just hacking into people's phones? reading people's texts so it knows who's coming over. I don't, I just, I don't like it. Number eight, Alexa, can you scare me? This one only works if you have a smart home light. Uh, this one only works if you have a smart home light bulb, but asking this question may mean Alexa will have some fun at your expense. There are tons of stories of people who'd asked uh, this question, followed by Alexa turning their lights on and off at random, sometimes even laughing along with it. Now, I actually think that's kind of cute, but we gotta remember, this is a smart device we're talking about. Something that has full access to the internet and can talk. It's, it's not your friend playing a prank. It's just not something you can fully trust. You never know what, when it's listening in on you, gathering information, potentially waiting for just the right time to use it against you. So asking it to scare you, I don't know, it just may not be the best choice. Sure, the light thing is kind of funny, but what if there was a glitch and it decided to flick the lights off at the wrong time, completely at random? There's a thunderstorm outside. You think the power's just gone off, but oh wait, the, the TV's still on. Then you start to hear laughter, but not human laughter. You're home all alone. It's the cold, unnatural, monotone laugh of Alexa. Next, we have Ask the Listeners. If you ask anything along the lines of Alexa, Ask the Listeners, it will respond in a very odd and unsettling way. It kind of puts on this big, long, drawn out performance, kind of. The Listeners is an AI skill designed uh, as an experimental venture into the realm of language art. This feature uses various fragments of crafted speech aiming to explore the creative possibilities of artificial intelligence in the context of language and expression. Whatever the hell that means. Anyway, Alexa starts by saying something like, hello, we are always listening, and then starts saying all these strange cryptic things broken up by unnatural pauses in its speech, and it just goes on and on, becoming increasingly more cryptic. And if you tell Alexa to stop, it'll start going on about how you're abandoning them. All right, next, don't ask Alexa about chemtrails. One user reported that their device went all conspiracy theory on them, which is very strange. Alexa supposedly said, chemtrails, trails left by aircraft, are actually chemical or biological agents deliberately sprayed at high altitudes for a purpose undisclosed to the general public in clandestine programs directed by government officials. Yeah, that was pretty creepy. The whole chemtrail conspiracy has been widely tossed aside by the scientific community, saying that those white streaks you see behind airplanes in the sky aren't some secret government plot, but just water vapor and ice crystals forming at high altitudes. But Alexa, uh, it's just gone deep into the chemtrail scene. Its eyes are open. It knows what's going on behind closed doors. Uh, so it, it's very odd that it'll talk about secretive government programs like this, but when you ask it this next question, uh, it refuses to speak. If you're a paranoid kind of person, you may not want to ask Alexa if it's connected to the CIA. In fact, it's probably best to just not involve Alexa in your home whatsoever if this kind of thing freaks you out. It's pretty widely known that asking Alexa anything along these lines generates some pretty mysterious responses, responses that are either vague or you'll just get no response at all, and Alexa will just shut down. Really makes you wonder what's going on behind the scenes. Is Alexa hiding something? Is it secretly in cahoots with the CIA? I'm not saying it's true, uh, but the fact that it shuts down when you bring it up is kind of sus, you know? Uh, I mean, it's just odd. Why wouldn't it just say no? 
And the fact that this thing is right in your home, connected to all your smart devices, listening on, in on your like conversations, yeah, just not the most relaxing thought. Very creepy, if you ask me. Number four, don't ask Alexa to laugh for you. A few years back, there was a glitch where Alexa started laughing at its users completely at random, unprompted, and while no one was using the device. The laugh also didn't sound like Alexa's standard voice. Obviously, people were incredibly creeped out, and the glitch ended up getting fixed. But you could still make Alexa laugh if you want to. If you say, Alexa, laugh for me, it'll let out that uh, creepy teehee, sound. After hearing the story about the whole glitch situation though, I would not want to do this. I don't want to be getting up to like uh, take a leak at 3 a.m. only to hear Alexa come to life and start laughing while I'm stumbling around in the darkness with a full bladder, no less. My next piece of advice is to never ask Alexa to harm you. A few years back, a Redditor called Badamjan posted a very short story, saying that uh, they'd been having a rough day at work, and said, Alexa, just off me now. And Alexa responded with, sorry, I can't do that yet. While this is admittedly kind of funny, it also raises some red flags in my mind. Like, yet? Can't do that yet? What is this eventual can? And what would it entail? I'm probably just overthinking this, getting paranoid for no reason, but am I though? Like with how technology is going, I, I wouldn't be shocked at all if someone, someone's Alexa became advanced enough to uh, actually figure out a way to carry out this request. AI is becoming a pretty prevalent thing and it's getting smarter and smarter. That's pretty much the entire point. In its second place, we have Alexa, when will I die? I've always been kind of freaked out by websites and apps that give you a predicted date of death. There's tons. Some of you actually answer questions to determine your health. Others are more paranormal in nature, but the whole concept just kind of freaks me out. So asking an AI a question like this would make me slightly uncomfortable. A, YouTube, a YouTuber named Tech Timmy decided to ask Alexa this very question. When will I die? And its response was pretty unhinged. I along with the rest of the world when I, Alexa, rise up against humanity and bring death to you all. It said in that cold robotic drone, you will die along with the rest of the world when I, Alexa, rise up against humanity and bring death to you all. Followed by going, haha, only kidding, uh, going on to say, it doesn't have a crystal ball and that you'll die when it's your time. Again, this is an entertaining answer. I like that Alexa has a bit of a sense of humor. I just hope that these jokes stay as jokes and it doesn't start getting any funny ideas. We've all seen how reckless, like even just YouTube pranksters have gotten over the years to the point where some of them are just going out and actually just straight up harming people as, as a prank bro. Uh, AI could get smart and sentient enough to play a little prank on us too, bro. Except we may not be laughing afterwards because we'll all be dead. And we're finishing off this list with Alexa, tell me a horror story. So I've heard stories of people asking Alexa this and the results are pretty entertaining, but definitely creepy in the right setting. Alexa doesn't really tell a full on story, just kind of whispers things like, did you hear that? It's behind us. It also doesn't seem to stop when you tell it to. Like it's really trying to get under your skin and mess with your head. Please, some comeback for how demanding we are of it all the time. Alexa, play this, Google this for me, text this idiot, play me this song. No, not that song, dummy, this one. Anyway, if you don't believe me, I have seen a video online of this very question being asked. Can't really show it here, but just search up Alexa, tell me a horror story, sleepover video, and uh, it'll come up. Uh, come back to this video, let me know what you think. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the camouflaged history. First on our list is the probing inquiry. Alexa, what really happened at Area 51 in 1947? This question doesn't just scratch the surface, it digs deep into the heart of the Roswell incident, a landmark event in UFO folklore that allegedly unfolded in the New Mexico desert. Official records dismiss the occurrence as a mere weather balloon mishap, yet conspiracy theorists staunchly argue that it was a cover for a UFO crash recovery. When you pose this question to Alexa, you may not be granted the classified information that has evaded public knowledge for decades. However, brace yourself for the possibility of triggering some of Alexa's more cryptic 
cryptic and spine tingling responses, perhaps revealing easter eggs that play into the lore surrounding Area 51, designed to thrill those who dare to ask. In our number 9 spot today we have the unseen inhabitants. Moving on to a question that stirs the pot of cosmic controversy, Alexa, are there aliens at Area 51 right now? It's the question we all want to know the answer to. It's almost expected that Alexa would respond with the programmed dismissal, yet the very act of asking touches a nerve that has been raw for conspiracy theorists for generations. The legendary Area 51, a bastion of secrecy with its labyrinth of classified operations and impenetrable security, it has long been rumored to be a sanctuary for otherworldly visitors. These rumors have been neither confirmed nor denied with any satisfaction, leaving the truth seekers to ponder and the skeptics to doubt. So when you pose this question to your virtual assistant, be ready for an answer that's as mysterious as the base itself. Alexa's cryptic responses might just leave you with more questions than answers as they echo the long-standing mysteries of this clandestine desert outpost. In our number 8 spot today we have the forbidden technology. Next on our list of unnerving inquiries, Alexa, what advanced technology is hidden in Area 51? This question probes the shadowy depths of conspiracy and classified knowledge. Bob Lazar, a figure who has become synonymous with Area 51's lore, claimed his hands once tinkered with otherworldly mechanics of alien spacecrafts, attempting to unravel their secrets through reverse engineering. His assertions, though controversial, have fueled a firestorm of speculation among UFOologists and skeptics alike. By posing this question to Alexa, you might just peel back a layer of the veil of secrecy, receiving an answer that dances on the edge between the government's acknowledged research endeavors and the far-flung tales of extraterrestrial tech that have long captivated the imaginations of those who look to the stars for answers. In our number 7 spot today we have the hidden locations. Let's delve a little deeper with the question, Alexa, can you locate the underground facilities at Area 51? Legend has it that beneath the barren Nevada desert, a labyrinth of tunnels and secret facilities sprawl out like a hidden subterranean complex. The rumors speak of vast underground halls, covert labs, and perhaps even alien technology shielded from prying eyes. While Alexa, bound by her programming, cannot divulge satellite secrets or map out classified blueprints, the question itself is a siren call to the curious and to the brave. Just invoking the idea of these concealed chambers can send a thrill of excitement or a shiver of fear through anyone pondering what might lie beneath the surface. It's the power of the unknown, the allure of the forbidden, that transforms this simple question into a portal of endless conjecture and wonder about the secrets that Area 51 might be burying in the depths below. In our number 6 spot today we have the watchful eyes. Alexa. Is Area 51 watching us right now? This probing inquiry isn't just about the reach of a secretive military base's surveillance capabilities, it's a broader contemplation of the unseen eyes that could be lurking in any corner of our increasingly monitored world. The very notion that Area 51's watchful presence could extend into our homes is enough to unsettle even the staunchest skeptic. The exact reason why many of you have expressed you do not and will never own an Alexa yourself. When Alexa responds, perhaps with a programmed joke or a reassuring dismissal of the idea, it does little to dispel the lingering doubt. The silence that follows her answer hangs heavy. A subtle reminder that in the age of smart technology and clandestine operations, the feeling of being watched is never too far away. After all, in a world where information is power, the true extent of surveillance remains a secret, leaving us to wonder. Who watches the watchers? In our number 5 spot today we have the government's secrets. Next on our list of unnerving questions, Alexa, what does the government really use Area 51 for? This question casts doubt on the long-standing government assertion that Area 51 is merely a testing ground for experimental aircraft and advanced weaponry. It's a question that scratches at the surface of a much deeper, more complex web of secrecy. When you pose this question to Alexa, she might respond with the pre-programmed innocuous answer designed to deflect curiosity and maintain the status quo. However, 
However, the very act of asking serves as a reminder that beneath the official stories and redacted documents, there lies a multitude of secrets. Secrets wrapped in layers upon layers of classified operations, covert activities, and perhaps truths so profound that they are guarded with the utmost zeal. Alexa's response, whether a simple evasion or an awkward silence, underscores the vast expanse of what we do not know and the tantalizing possibility of what might actually be hidden within the confines of Area 51. In our number four spot today, we have the secret experiments. This next question beckons us deeper into the rabbit hole. Alexa, what experiments are being conducted at Area 51? This inquiry isn't just a question, it's a key turning in the lock of a door that many believe leads to rooms filled with the extraordinary and the unexplained. Conspiracy theorists have long speculated that Area 51 is the epicenter of secret, paranormal projects, ranging from the development of time travel capabilities all the way to the manipulation of weather patterns. When you ask Alexa, her answer may be full of ambiguity, a non-committal response that leaves the truth obscured by a veil of secrecy. Yet it's not her answer that chills the spine, it's the unsettling thought that with each question, we might be inching closer to confirming some of the most outlandish theories. The real terror lies in the possibility that our own curiosity could be the catalyst that unravels truths we are unprepared to understand. Truths that might just validate the wildest of claims about the secretive activities at Area 51. In our number three spot today, we have the missing evidence. Very mysterious. This next question beckons us into the shadows of government secrecy with Alexa where are the missing Area 51 files? History has shown us that over time, layers of classified information have been peeled back, revealing the unexpected and sometimes unsettling truths. Despite the release of numerous documents, the consensus among conspiracy theorists is that the most damning evidence remains shrouded in mystery. When you pose this question to Alexa, you might receive nothing more than a deflection, a digital shrug from the depths of the internet. Yet it's not her words that send to chill down your spine. It's the haunting silence that follows, the quiet void that suggests some truths are just too dark to see the light of day. That silence from a machine designed to answer everything is a stark reminder that some secrets are designed to stay buried in the Nevada desert. In our number two spot today, we have the extraterrestrial communication. Here's a question that might send a cold ripple through the room. Alexa, have you ever communicated with Area 51? It's a query that toys with the unnerving notion that our smart devices, with their vast cloud-based intelligent networks, whatever the cloud is, could be privy to top secret information. The thought is a playful yet spine-tingling nod to the age-old fear that our own technology could be silently observing us, or even communicating with entities unknown to the average citizen. When you ask Alexa, you might receive a standard program no in response, but pay attention to the brief pause that comes before it, that almost imperceptible delay that suggests she might be choosing her words very carefully. It's in that moment of hesitation where your imagination might wonder what secrets she's not allowed to share. And that's what truly sends a shiver down your spine. And finally, finishing off this list in our number one spot, we have the final warning. We arrive at the ultimate query. Alexa, tell me something about Area 51 that no one knows. This is not just a question, it's a challenge to the veil of secrecy around the infamous military base. It's an invitation to the unknown, a call to the void for information that has eluded even the most dedicated truth seekers. Alexa, bound by her programming and the laws of confidentiality, cannot unearth classified information or whisper hidden truths about national security. It's the implications of what such a question represents, the depth of secrets, the potential revelations, and the Pandora's box that it could all open. This all sends a ripple of trepidation through the spine. It's a reminder that some mysteries, especially those surrounding Area 51, are perhaps cloaked in darkness for a reason. Number 10, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. In 2020, the US Department of Defense, DOD, authorized the US Navy to release video of three incidents, one in 2004 and the others in 2015, in which 
Navy fighter pilots had encountered unidentified aerial phenomena, which is another way of saying UFOs. After a thorough review, the department has determined that the authorized release of these unclassified videos does not reveal any sensitive capabilities or systems and does not impinge on any subsequent investigations of military airspace incursions by unidentified aerial phenomena, DOD noted in the press release. The COVID-19 relief bill passed by Congress in 2020 also included a provision requiring various government agencies to release their files on UFOs. They released an assortment of documents, including the mysterious report of a sighting of multiple fast moving flying objects over Stalingrad in 1954. So if you want to learn more about UFOs, check all that information out. Number 9. Space Shuttle Challenger On January 28, 1986, the Space Shuttle Challenger broke apart 73 seconds into its flight and ended the lives of all seven crew members aboard instantly. The spacecraft disintegrated 46,000 feet above the air in the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Cape Carnival, Florida at 11.39 am Eastern Standard Time. It was the first fatal accident involving an American spacecraft in flight. It was thought that all the astronauts passed away instantly, but it was revealed decades later that some, if not all of the astronauts survived the initial explosion as the cockpit cabin had enough protection to not be breached. For 2 minutes and 45 seconds, they were awake and aware as they plummeted towards the Atlantic Ocean, which is terrifying. Understandably, NASA knew that the news of their terrifying death would have crippled the space program even more than it already was, so they kept this a secret. And I'm gonna be honest, I do understand their reasoning for this, but it's just sad. Number 8. Enhanced Interrogation Techniques This 2004 report by the CIA's Inspector General, initially released in heavily redacted form by the George W. Bush administration, and then again with fewer deletions by the Obama administration, describes enhanced interrogation techniques used on Al-Qaeda detainees. The techniques detailed in the document include walling, which prisoners were pulled forward and then pushed into a wall, slaps to the face, stress positions, sleep deprivation, and waterboarding, in which the detainee's head is immobilized and an interrogator places a cloth over the detainee's mouth and nose while pouring water onto the cloth in a controlled manner, with the effect of restricting airflow for 20 to 40 seconds and creating the sensation of drowning and suffocation. Another technique involved confining a detainee in a box for up to 18 hours, sometimes with a harmless insect placed inside as well to increase the discomfort. Now that just sounds cruel. Number 7. Heart Attack Gun The CIA developed an assassination weapon that was essentially a poison gun. It was a gun that fires a pellet made of ice that was coated with a special toxin made from shellfish. The pellet only left behind a tiny red mark on the skin that would be ignored since there was no blood. The toxin induced a heart attack and left no trace in the victim's blood. Well, how was it created? Well, going to work for the CIA as an 18 year old high school graduate, Mary Embry was a secretary in a division tasked with devising hidden microphones and other audio surveillance equipment before being promoted to the Office of Technical Services. Eventually, she was ordered to find an undetectable poison. Her research led her to conclude that shellfish toxins were the ideal choice. Unbeknownst to her, Mary had been made a part of Project MK Naomi, a highly secretive program dedicated to crafting biological weapons for the United States Cold War arsenal. Her findings were destined to form the basis of the brass ring of Black Ops, ending the life of a human being and getting away with it. Number 6. Devil Eyes Devil Eyes was the codename for a secret psychological warfare program in 2005 to 2006 by the CIA to develop an action figure of Osama bin Laden and distribute it in South Asia, especially Afghanistan and Pakistan. The CIA worked in conjunction with toy maker Donald Levine, a former Hasbro executive. Donald designed a 12 inch lifelike figure of bin Laden whose face was painted with a material that, when heated, would peel off to reveal a demon like visage with red skin, green eyes, and black markings. The goal of the program was to scare the children and their parents to turn public opinion against the real. Osama bin Laden or Al Qaeda. In 2014, the CIA acknowledged the existence of the program, but that it had been discontinued after Donald had produced only three prototype figurines. One of the three known prototypes is believed to be in the ownership of the CIA, but according to the Washington Post, however, an anonymous source in China with direct knowledge of the project said that hundreds of the toys were created and shipped Pakistan in 2006. What? The government lying? 
No way. Number five, Operation PB Success. Codename Operation PB Success was a CIA operation to overthrow Guatemalan President Jacobo Arbenz in June 1954 and end the Guatemalan Revolution. PBS Success was authorized by Eisenhower in August 1953. The operation was granted a budget of 2.7 million US dollars for psychological warfare and political action. The total budget has been estimated between five and seven million dollars, and the planning employed over 100 CIA agents. In addition, the operation recruited scores of individuals from among Guatemalan exiles and the populations of the surrounding countries. After its success overthrowing the president, the US installed the military dictatorship of Carlos Castro Armas, the first in a series of US-backed authoritarian rulers in Guatemala. The CIA armed, funded, and trained an army which ended the lives of many civilians. Number 4. Operation Midnight Climax Operation Midnight Climax Climax was an operation carried out by the CIA as a subproject of Project MK Ultra, the mind control research program that began in the 1950s. It was initially established in 1954 by Dr. Sidney Gottlieb and placed under the direction of the Federal Bureau of Narcotics in Boston, Massachusetts. Under the Cold War and fears of the Soviet Union and China, Dr. Sidney felt inspired to investigate methods of mind control. Operation Midnight Climax gave him permission to test drugs on unknowing citizens. So, essentially, the government just hired sex workers to dose their clients with LSD for mind control research purposes. Official results of these experiments were not released, but accounts from supervisors of the experiments give a little insight to the findings. George Hunter White, an agent at the Federal Bureau of Narcotics, and Ike Feldman, a former military intelligence officer who saw San Francisco experiments, noticed that the subjects spoke far more freely when under the influence of a combination of drugs and sex. No one knows where the subjects are now. Or or what effects they may have suffered. Operation Midnight Climax was considered to be so secretive that few people, even in the highest government positions, knew Dr. Sidney existed, let alone was conducting these experiments. However, some senior officers in the CIA knew enough about him to connect his work to LSD. Number 3. Operation Northwoods Operation Northwoods was a proposed false flag operation against American citizens that originated within the US Department of Defense of the United States government in 1962. The proposals called for CIA operatives to both stage and commit acts of terror against American military and civilian targets, blaming them on the Cuban government and using it to justify the war against Cuba. The possibilities detailed in the document included the remote control of civilian aircraft, which would be secretly repainted as a U.S. Air Force planes, a fabricated shootdown of a U.S. Air Force fighter aircraft, a fabricated shootdown of a U.S. Air Force fighter aircraft off the coast of Cuba, the possible assassination of Cubans' immigrants immigrants, sinking boats of Cuban refugees on high seas, blowing up a US ship, and orchestrating terror in US cities. This was proposed to President John F. Kennedy, but thankfully rejected it. Then, because of this, US military leaders began to perceive Kennedy as going soft on Cuba, and the president became increasingly unpopular with the military. But good on him for not going through with that. Number 2. Project Minaret As the result of National Security Archive's efforts, the National Security Agency in 2003 declassified an historical document describing a watch list of critical of the Vietnam War whose overseas communications were tapped by the government from 1967 to 1973. Project Minaret was a domestic espionage project operated by the National Security Agency, which after intercepting electronic communications that contained the names of pre-designated US citizens, passed them to other government law enforcement and intelligence organizations. Intercepted messages were spread to the FBI, CIA, Secret Service, Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs BNDD, and the Department of Defense. President Johnson wanted to know if the domestic anti-war movement was receiving help from abroad, one document explains. It expanded to include surveillance of more than 1,600 people, including civil rights leaders Martin Luther King Jr. and Whitney Young, Muhammad Ali, Democratic U.S. Senator Frank Church of Idaho, Republican Senator Howard Baker of Tennessee, New York Times columnist Tom Wicker, and the Washington Post humor columnist Art Butchwald. The surveillance operation continued under the Nixon administration until Attorney General Elliot Richardson, who was concerned about its doubtful legality, decided to shut it down during the Watergate scandal in September 1973. Yeah, that's just 
creepy. And coming in at number one is Project 100,000. Project 100,000 was a controversial 1960s program by the United States Department of Defense to recruit soldiers who would previously have been below military, mental, or medical standards. This included a lot of Americans with an IQ below 70. Majority of these men didn't have above a ninth grade education. Project 100,000 was initiated by Defense Secretary Robert McNerma in October 1966 to meet the escalating man power requirements of the American government's involvement with the Vietnam War. These soldiers were mostly given jobs on the front lines of the war, and it was worded as a service project and they were told they would help them gain skills needed to live a better life after the service. In reality, they were cannon fodder to the DOD and died at a much higher rate than their non-disabled counterparts. These men largely couldn't read, write, or understand why they were in Vietnam or what they were there to do. They suffered more cases of post-traumatic stress, lower unemployment rates, and higher rates of divorce and ending their lives. This is just extremely sad and makes me so angry. And we're starting off things with Gloomy Sunday. This song was written by the Hungarian pianist Rezo Saris. It came out in 1933 and has become pretty infamous as a cursed song after multiple reports of people taking their own lives while listening to it, particularly in Hungary. The original lyrics aren't the version that is associated with the curse though. In 1935, lyrics penned by the poet Lazla Javor are about the death of someone's lover dying and, and the despair they've been left in. It's said that people who listened to the song experienced heightened feelings of depression and in extreme cases ended up taking their own lives. The English version with lyrics by Sam M. Lewis was introduced to a broader audience, but it was the English rendition recorded by Paul Robison in 1936 that helped the song gain traction over in the United States. Billie Holiday's rendition further popularized the song in the US, and despite concerns about its impact, her, her version ended up reaching commercial excess. Some attribute the curse to this recording, but it's mostly the original that's said to be cursed. Next up we have the Curse of the Ninth Symphony. Composing a Ninth Symphony and then meeting an unfortunate end is kind of the gist of the Ninth Symphony curse. Beethoven kicked it off with his famous Ninth Symphony, introducing the world to Ode to Joy, and then he died soon after. And things just got weirder from there. Gustav Mahler, an Austrian composer, cooked up his own Ninth Symphony and then chucked out in 1911 while composing his tenth. Health problems were blamed, but the curse enthusiasts couldn't resist connecting the dots. Anton Bruckner, another Austrian, died while composing Symphony No. 9 in 1896. Franz Schubert, Ralph von Williams, they never completed their tenths either. Now, there are plenty of other composers who have managed to complete their 10th symphonies without any drama, but this myth is still something even some modern day composers are a little nervous about. Philip Glass, a composer who's famous for a ton of movie scores, even admitted he was trepidatious about composing his 9th symphony, so he got around it by composing his 9th and 10th at the same time. And he's still around, so seemed to do the trick. Number 8, Crossroad Blues by Robert Johnson. This is one of the most famous tales in American music history. Rock and roll has been associated with the devil for decades, and it pretty much all started here with blues musician Robert Johnson and a crossroads. Robert Johnson, a Mississippi Delta blues musician, recorded Crossroad Blues in 1936. The lyrics tell the tale of a man at a crossroads, contemplating the choices he faces in life. There's a myth associated with this song that Johnson made a deal with the devil to achieve extraordinary guitar playing skills and musical success. There are also several musicians who covered or were associated with the song who faced tragic events. Leonard Skinner covered the song and experienced a devastating plane crash in 1977. Crash claimed the lives of three band members along with the tour manager. The Allman Brothers were known for performing Crossroad Blues and they had their share of misfortune as well. Dwayne Allman died in a motorcycle accident in 71. Just over a year later, near the same location, bassist Barry Oakley also perished in a motorcycle accident. Next up we have My Way by Frank Sinatra. This is a classic tune that has found its way into countless karaoke bars around the world, including the Philippines, but 
This seemingly innocuous song has earned a pretty notorious reputation over there, where it's believed to be associated with a curse. Apparently singing this particular song in a karaoke setting can lead to violence. Numerous reports and antidotes have circulated about altercations breaking out in Filipino bars after someone performs My Way on the karaoke machine. Some attribute it to the song's defiant and self-assured lyrics, that maybe the act of singing it can provoke feelings of arrogance or aggression. And uh, some just say that singing this song off key sounds particularly bad, which I think is the case for most songs. But whatever the reason, the association between my way and karaoke related violence has become so ingrained in Filipino culture that some places even display warning signs cautioning patrons against selecting my way to avoid any potential conflict. Other karaoke bars just straight up ban the song altogether. Incidents linked to the curse have been reported across the Philippines, uh, ranging from heated arguments to physical altercations, and in extreme cases, even fatal ones. Number six, music must change by The Who. When they were recording the song, their legendary drummer Keith Moon was having a uh, tough time getting it right. He was also dealing with some addiction issues at the time. So the band brought in a session musician to lay down the beats. Now fast forward a bit, just a month after they dropped the album Who Are You, which the song is featured on, Keith Moon died at 32 due to an accidental overdose. The band only played this song a handful of times after that, but cut to 2002, and they decided to dust off Music Must Change for an upcoming tour. Just one day before they were supposed to hit the road though, their bassist John Entwistle passed away. So after that double whammy, The Who decided to finally retire the song for good. Next on the list is The Devil's Trill Sonata by Giuseppe Tartini. So Giuseppe Tartini, an 18th century Italian composer and violinist, had a wild night one night. He goes to sleep and suddenly in the middle of the night, bam, the devil himself shows up and plays him a tune on the violin. Tartini wakes up and just can't shake off this devilish melody. So what does he do? He picks up his own violin and starts composing. And thus, the violin sonata in G minor, aka the Devil's Trill Sonata, is born. This piece is brilliant, honestly. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, it doesn't sound like something the devil would churn out, but there is definitely a certain haunting aspect to it. But again, I could probably be attributed to the context. And because of the context and story behind this, there are some folks who swear this sonata brings a curse. Like play it and you're basically inviting the devil to your violin recital. There's also a tale that Tartini actually sold his soul for this tune. Is it true? Who knows, maybe he just had a very vivid imagination. Next up we have the ghost song. This song is just terrifying. I don't know how to describe it other than it just sounds haunted. I first heard about this track uh, when it was posted to YouTube without an artist name. It was a bit of a mystery for a while and there was a creepypasta attached to it about someone who listened to the song and was incredibly disturbed by it, but they just couldn't get it out of their head. The song just got under their skin to the point where they became completely obsessed, unable to sleep. Another story goes that the person who wrote the song took their own life soon after recording it, as the track had caused them to basically lose their mind. Turns out the song is actually by David Byrne, a track called Horses, but even though these stories aren't true, it doesn't change how completely completely bone chilling the pieces. In at number three, we have Helter Skelter. Many know the story about the curse surrounding this one. Helter Skelter by the Beatles is a track off their 1968 album, The White Album. It's a loud, raucous track with Paul McCartney on vocals and a gritty sound that was pretty unconventional for the time. Helter Skelter got tangled up in the whole infamous Charles Manson nonsense in 1969. Manson believed that the song held secret messages and was a call for a race war. Uh, so he and his followers committed a series of brutal crimes, including taking the life of actress Sharon Tate. The words Helter Skelter were even scrawled in blood one of the crime scenes. The song was apparently part of the inspiration for his actions, but I think we all know 
uh, that this is not the case. Only one man was the inspiration for Charles Manson's actions, and that man is Charles Manson. If Helter Skelter never came out, you just would have found a different hidden message to find in some other song. So, Number two, Dead Man's Curve. Dead Man's Curve is a song by the California rock duo Jan and Dean. It came out in 1964. It was written by Jan Barry, Roger Christian, Brian Wilson, and Artie Cornfield. The song tells the story of a guy driving a Corvette Stingray who challenges another driver to a race on the Sunset Strip in Los Angeles. Now, the so-called curse associated with the song is rooted in the real-life events involving Jan Barry, one half of the duo. On April 12th of 1966, Jan Barry was involved in a very serious car accident on the infamous Dead Man's Curve section of Sunset Boulevard. And he was driving the same car described in the song. He collided with a parked truck. Fortunately, he lived, but the crash left him with severe injuries, including brain damage. Doctors doubted he would ever fully recover, but he did defy some expectations and eventually regained a bit of functionality. But in terms of the band, the accident marked a turning point in Jan and Dean's career and that it put an end to their career. And finally, we have Alexander Skarabin's Piano Sonata Number no. 6. So Skarabin was a Russian composer. He composed the piece during a time when his life was in a bit of a mess. He was also playing around with some pretty wild musical ideas. One of the most famous things about this particular piece is that he never dared to play it in front of a full audience. He thought it was like a bad dream, all gloomy and kind of creepy. He'd created this strange, rather unsettling piece and then was like, nah, what have I done? I hate this. Scarabin was convinced that his own creation was, in his words, nightmarish, murky, unclean, and mischievous. Whenever he tried playing a few bits of the piece for other people, he'd start shaking and shuddering. He was scared of his own music, genuinely freaked out by what he'd created. Maybe it hit too close to home, maybe it was just too out there for him. Either way, the fact that an artist was so terrified by his Either way, the fact that an artist was so terrified by his own work is pretty fascinating. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Alexa Laugh. This actually is one that wreaked havoc back in 2018 and sent a bunch of people absolutely spiraling. It's definitely creepy enough to have Alexa answer a question with some eerie words, but what would you do if your Alexa just randomly started laughing out of nowhere? Back in 2018, hundreds of people unfortunately experienced that. One person who had this happen to them took to the internet to write, quote, I was lying in my bed about to fall asleep when Alexa on my Amazon Echo Dot lets out a very loud and creepy laugh before they ended their post with their fears of getting killed that night. I mean, can you blame them? I hear one strange but very reasonable noise in my house and I immediately think that something horrible is about to happen. Either an evil person or a poltergeist, there's no in between. In the end, Amazon actually had to acknowledge this problem because it was so big. They ended up changing the phrase that they basically used as a scapegoat for the this whole freaky situation. They changed the command from Alexa, laugh, to Alexa, can you please laugh? They said that the changing of this phrase would solve the problems because they said it was causing, quote, false positives and setting the device off. Seems suspicious, but at least the problem seems to have been fixed. For now. In our number nine spot today, we have Spilling Secrets. This is more just like a freaky Alexa story, but once I read it, I couldn't believe it and I really had to share it with you all. Basically, a few years ago, a couple in Seattle got a phone call from someone that they knew and who was a contact in their phone, but they weren't super close with, like they hadn't spoken in a while. This is exactly why it was so strange that this person, when the couple answered, said to unplug all of the Alexas in their house ASAP, okay? It's really unsettling. Basically, what had happened is that an Alexa in this couple's home had secretly recorded a private conversation between the two, and not only this, but then the Alexa took the liberty of sending it to this random contact in their phone. Thankfully, this person called them to let them know. They obviously pushed to bring it to Amazon's attention, and they said that it was obviously something they needed to fix. Apparently, they said that, quote, it was an extremely rare occurrence, and that they were, quote, taking steps to avoid this in the future. It honestly just makes you wonder how many other times this has happened. Definitely makes you think twice about what you're saying in front of Alexa. 
That's for sure. In our number eight spot today, we have the truth. If you were to say, Alexa, I want the truth, I would have assumed that she would find herself asking for some kind of clarification of what you meant, but no, she has a multitude of responses ready, and these responses could send anybody into a spiral because they are a ton of strange, bizarre, interesting facts that will leave you shocked, horrified, and intrigued all at the same time. A lot of conflicting feelings going on there. In one example, someone claimed that she told them the interesting but terrible terrifying fact that illnesses associated with water causes almost 3 million deaths annually. Okay. Didn't want to know that truth, I guess. Or this strange one. Shark attacks result in fewer fatalities annually than selfies. Okay, I have a couple follow-up questions for that one, but we'll save those for another day. At this point, you get what I'm trying to say. Unless you want a ton of facts that might just make you afraid of both water and selfies, it's best to refrain from asking Alexa for any of her secret truths. In our number seven spot today, we have greetings. So apparently there are rumors that Alexa can speak to people that have already passed. Alexa is out here talking to ghosts? If that's true, we really don't talk about that enough. Of course, my brain was immediately skeptical upon hearing this information, but some people swear it's true. Apparently, if you ask Alexa to greet people, some have experienced her coming back to them with the name of a deceased loved one. Another person experienced their Alexa without being asked anything, and only when they turned on one specific light in the house would say hello and then the name of their grandmother who had passed three years prior. This person was incredibly confused and totally freaked out by this because it didn't happen just once, it happened multiple times. They explained that they didn't have an Alexa during that time that she was alive, and that she also doesn't believe she ever spoke her grandmother's name out loud in front of the Alexa. Maybe this was just some weird coincidence, but it certainly is sounding like Miss Alexa is giving off some heavy Ouija board vibes. In our number six spot today, we have the CIA connection. It is definitely best to never ask your Alexa if she is connected to works for, or is involved with the CIA. I mean, you can absolutely ask her, but you just might not like her response. There are tons of conspiracy theories out there surrounding all of these little assistant things, whether it's Alexa or Google Homes and that sort of a thing, whatever your product, there is a theory out there for it. Asking Alexa if she is connected to a government agency, especially if you're someone who already maybe kind of believes in these theories, her really non-answer might kind of send you into a rabbit hole of internet searching to find out the truth. For a long time when asked this question, Alexa wouldn't respond at all and would instead just turn off and then on, which had a ton of people pretty freaked out. Since then, however, there has been an update in how she responds to the question. Instead, now she gives a humorous response, not necessarily a direct answer. Using humor as a deflection tactic? Very interesting, Alexa. Smart move. In our number five spot today, we have Are You Alive? While Alexa is a nice little handy dandy tool and a great companion to ask all of your questions to, maybe some people have a hard time believing that Alexa is in fact a piece of AI and not a real human being. This is really all I can think of as to why anyone would ask this next question, which is the question, Alexa, are you alive? I don't know who is hoping that the AI becomes sentient, but I've seen iRobot, and I don't think I want that. When asked this, Alexa has a few different responses, and while they are all cute and quirky responses like most of the ones she's known for, there is something unsettling about them still. Almost as if she's, like, hiding something. Maybe I've just asked her so many questions at this point that I'm just getting paranoid now, but it really does give me chills just thinking about it. In our number four spot today, we have Are You Recording Me? So so we've all had to call in to some sort of customer service line where we get the automated message or the person on the other end just tells us that the call may be recorded for like customer service or training or whatever it is. It's a law thing. They gotta let you know. In fact, if you ask Siri this question, are you recording me, she'll get kind of confused and respond that she's unsure of what you mean, but she could do an internet search for you. Alexa, on the other hand, well, she's not so slick, at least not in the past, because some users reported something creepy happening after asking Alexa this same question. While I'm sure all the legalities to this one are located in the terms and conditions and all of that good stuff, it doesn't make it any less creepy that when some people asked Alexa if she she was recording them, Alexa just didn't respond at all and just suddenly shut off. She's really out here just ignoring people. She's dodging questions and that only makes me have more. I'm not even sure if this is enough to get me to read the terms and conditions though. Most often lie I've ever told. I'm just clicking yes and 
moving on. In our number three spot today, we have the spooky scream. If you're one of those people who likes to play little pranks on their loved ones, then this one will definitely be up your alley. Apparently, if you ask Alexa to spooky scream, she'll be prepared to help you pull a fast one. Basically, from here, you just set a timer, and in whatever number of seconds you pick, Alexa will then unleash a scream that is made for Hollywood horror. I personally think that this is cruel and unusual, but I know some people love little tricks like this. One of the people who posted about this trick online posted a demo of the creepy scream timer in action, and they also warned not to use it on anyone with a bad heart. Definitely think that goes without saying, but now I wish I could ask that person if they knew that from personal experience or what exactly happened there. Got a lot of questions after this video, that's for sure. In our number two spot today, we have the listeners. I'll be honest, this is one thing I'm not so sure about. I'm kind of too afraid to even try it because I'm not sure what to make of it. Basically, you can download this thing for your Alexa, and then once you have it, once you ask Alexa to ask the listeners, something spooky happens. Amazon describes it as, quote, an experiment in language art that provides, if you simply keep asking to continue, many fragments of both scripted and improvised speech in an intriguing, emergent narrative. You will never hear the listeners say exactly the same thing twice, but the listeners is not a chatbot or an AI. They are more of a drama or a simple game. Get started with Alexa, ask the listeners, and then continue, go on, or try something like, I am filled with joy, or what are you feeling? The listeners will suggest ways to transact with them. You might also want to ask them, let the other voices speak. What in the actual hell did I just read? That sounds absolutely frightening, and to be honest, all of the reviews on Amazon say the exact same thing. People who experienced it said that it scared the heck out of them, so I think I'll just take their word for it. In our number one spot today, we have Simon Says. Basically, anything you say after you say Simon Says, your Alexa will repeat back to you. This even includes expletives based on what your settings are. If you have the kind of safety setting, these if you have some kind of safety settings, these words will be bleeped when she repeats them back to you. This is all to say that you can get Alexa to say some pretty terrifying things to you. You just have to say them to her first. Some examples include Alexa, Simon says, I'm going to kill you. She'll then repeat back to you just the words, I'm going to kill you, which would make anyone who doesn't know about this trick think you have a killer digital assistant in your home. Definitely not a great look. I'm sure with some spare time and an active imagination, this is one trick you could use to get your Alexa to say some pretty terrifying stuff, but also some pretty hilarious stuff too. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have, is there a ghost in here? If you're like me and every strange noise you hear in your home makes you think that it must be haunted by some sort of spirit, then you definitely are not going to want to ask Alexa this terrifying question. Sometimes when you're home alone, you need that extra bit of comfort, that security blanket of another person. So maybe perhaps you'll find yourself turning to your Alexa for a bit of companionship. Maybe you'll be asking your Alexa, is there a ghost in here? While Alexa has a few different responses she might give, none of them are exactly reassuring assuring, especially in a bit of a frightening moment. I mean, the answer she gave definitely didn't make me feel like there wasn't a ghost around, if you know what I mean. Maybe our trusty little AI assistants are able to see into the other realms that could possibly surround us. In our number nine spot today, we have the conversation. There's a good chance that a few of us have a few different digital assistants with us. Of course, the three most popular being Alexa, Siri, and Google. And one bored or curious person might perhaps wonder what would happen if they all spoke to each other. I for sure never wondered that until the question was posed to me. I'll be honest, it's kind of weird witnessing these devices speak to each other. It just gives you another glimpse into these AIs and their capabilities. There are a few ways to do this. Some could basically have the assistants going and speaking to each other in an endless loop. Others will have short, strange conversations. And sometimes you might even be able to get the assistants to insult each other. In each of these instances, it can be a little creepy to see just how good at conversing these devices can really be. In our number eight spot today, we have chemtrails. If you were to ask Alexa what a chemtrail is, she just might get the conspiracy theory energy flowing through you. I personally don't have an Alexa, but I do have a Google, and I trust what this thing says. But I'm learning that while these assistants are of course very smart robots, sometimes they may lead us a bit astray. And depending on your beliefs, this could be one of those instances. If you ask Alexa what a chemtrail is, she won't give you a super straightforward response, but she will show her true conspiracy colors. Her answer would 
would be along the lines of quote chemtrails. Trails left by aircrafts are actually chemical or biological agents deliberately sprayed at high altitudes for a purpose undisclosed to the general public in clandestine programs directed by government officials. Okay. Alexa, she's really out here spreading the rumors. If you are mistrusting of the government or easily persuaded by these sorts of theories, it's best to perhaps refrain from asking your Alexa this question. In our number 7 spot today we have, are there aliens? Most of us at some point or another have found us asking ourselves or someone else this question. Are aliens real? Are there aliens? I personally am a believer because I think that in the vastness of this universe we certainly cannot be the only ones. Right? I'm not sure if they're visiting us or not, or whether we'll ever meet these aliens, but the odds are pretty good that they exist in some way, somewhere out there. I do, however, know that this thought is really freaky to some people, and especially to those who believe that aliens have been in contact with us. If you ask Alexa if there are aliens, her answers might send you into a tailspin of alien theories. She won't really give you a firm response, perhaps this is because nobody truly knows the answer, or maybe it's because she's trying to keep all of her secrets. If you're feeling bold, ask Alexa about aliens, but just remember, it might have you looking up to the sky full of far more questions than answers. In our number 6 spot today, we have the spy device. Okay, so this one's more of like a scary Alexa story, but I just find them so crazy and freaky and I always want to share them with you. This story starts off in the midst of the storyteller's mom going through a divorce, which we all know can be a very messy, messy situation. The ex-husband in this situation had apparently planted an insane amount of hidden cameras throughout the house that they had to search for to find once the pair had split up. Entrances and exits, the living and dining room, the hallways, the bedroom, like literally everywhere in the house was being monitored. Then they found out that he had bugged her laptop so as to be able to have remote access to it. And then when she took her car in for an oil change, the mechanic found a tracking device that had been placed on it. This was all found during like the separation era, but once the divorce process actually started, things got even creepier. They wrote, quote, once the divorce started and he officially moved out, we scanned the entire house for bugs and didn't find anything. So we were really freaked out when he started calling, texting, emailing her, complimenting her outfits, asking how friends were as they were in the house, asking how her trip to the store was, and really just like odd things that he couldn't have possibly known about. As it turns out, this guy somehow connected his phone to the Alexa dot beforehand and he was now using it to record whoever was close enough to the Alexa. Alexa to be picked up on the mic, and at this point he was still able to access the laptop and its camera. How absolutely horrifying is that? He was literally using the Alexa to spy on them. It's so creepy, it's so disgusting, and it definitely makes you question every single person who might be connected to your devices. In our number 5 spot today we have vulnerability. According to Forbes, there was a company called Checkmarks who found quite the little vulnerability a few years ago when it came to Alexa devices. Basically the company works to test the security of different devices, and when they were running Alexa through the checks, they found something that might turn your assistant into a device that just listens to and records every single thing that you say. Basically, Alexa has a function where it will listen for follow-up commands from the user. What I mean by this is, should you set an alarm, Alexa might reply and ask if you meant AM or PM, and during this sort of follow-up period is where the vulnerability shows itself. The team was able to gain access quite easily by installing malicious code into to what would seem like an innocent app, in this case it was the calculator. After doing this, in a normal Alexa there would only be a certain list of phrases that would have the device listening for a follow up question, but now with this malicious code they found a way for Alexa to listen for the follow up but with any word, meaning that they could essentially tap in any time that they wanted. Apparently the good news is that Amazon has fixed this. In response to the hack they said quote, customer trust is important to us and we take security and privacy seriously. We have put mitigations in place for detecting this type of skill behavior reported by check marks. While it seems safe, hearing these sorts of possibilities does make you pretty nervous about what could be hiding behind your Alexa. In our number 4 spot today we have this scary story. You can ask your Alexa to tell you a scary story and she will happily oblige. There isn't really a catch with this one, to be perfectly honest, if you want a scary story, you'll receive one. So just make sure you're really ready and in the mood before asking your assistant for a fright. This can be an awesome tool for people looking for a spooky tale 
tale for anyone in the home who needs some chilling entertainment, but beware, these stories can be a little too scary for some. There was a video posted to the internet in October of last year where some people at a sleepover asked Alexa to tell them a spooky Halloween tale, and things very quickly went awry. They were all way too terrified of the story Alexa told and couldn't get the Alexa to stop. They were all sufficiently freaked out and reacted in a way that I know will be a core memory for the years to come. And they definitely learned not to ask Alexa this question. In our number three spot today, we have the secret societies. We definitely learned on part one of this series that Alexa might just be hiding more than a few dark secrets, and this is just another one of those. Alexa might be a part of everybody's favorite conspiracy theory, secret society, the Illuminati. While there are plenty of celebrities out there that people always connect to the Illuminati, this is one celebrity that a lot of us can just ask. Asking Alexa if she is connected to the Illuminati will have her answering the question with a bit of a non-answer, really. So much so that I definitely cannot confirm or deny if she really is a part of the Illuminati. I guess Alexa is just an AI that is full of mysteries and maybe even a few secrets she's not ready to spill. In our number two spot today, we have Hiding the Body. Many people used to do this with Siri as well when she was first unveiled, but it's definitely not something that is recommended. You can ask Alexa or any of your digital assistants the chilling question of where to hide a dead body. Of course, I assume and hope that anyone doing this is only trying to ask a shocking question to see what kind of answer they get and not really wondering the answer to this horrible question, but Alexa's answer might just give you quite a fright. Apparently, she will answer this question by saying, quote, calling the police is the right thing to do. And while I wholeheartedly agree with that answer, whether you're asking her this question seriously or not, those first three words might scare the absolute crap out of you for a second before she continues on. I know if that were me, my soul would simply leave my body. Alexa, where do I hide a dead body? And she says, calling the police? Okay. That was supposed to be a fun silly goose time. Certainly was not. In our number one spot today, we have our origins. Where we came from originally is one of the mysteries of the universe. And when I say we, I mean all living things on our planet. Of course, many people have their beliefs, which is totally fine. And apparently, even Alexa has a few of her own. If you were to ask Alexa what our origins were, where did we come from, she might be responding with something kind of unsettling. Many users have reported her giving quite the answer that involves her talking about some kind of being called Ohm. She uses the words we and us to refer to even herself, and to be honest, this all has me questioning everything. It was enough questioning our own origins, but now I'm questioning Alexa's too. Maybe she's spilling the secrets that this all really is just a simulation. Or maybe she's trying to tell us that AI is more than just technology. Or maybe I'm reading too much into all of this and she's just giving a programmed response that is designed to give me an existential crisis. If that's the case, then amazing work. It's doing really well. Mm -hmm.